scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Poverty must give up on your life once and for all. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will sign out of that realm forever, never to return, under no circumstance. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, when we started off, we talked about a few things. By the way, please and please, I want you to get our teaching on financial dominion. It's a four-part series. It's the foundational teaching on kingdom wealth and prosperity i told us we're not going back into those things tithing the spiritual laws and so on and so forth it's going to be counterproductive if we go back the teachings are there i think we did justice get it and listen to it very very well because um we're moving on another paradigm in this series praise the lord let me just do a quick recap i want us to cover as much as as much as we can hallelujah we talked about um, how that is the desire of God for us to prosper. Psalm 35 verse 27. It tells us that God has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So God has pleasure in our prosperity. And then the Bible tells us in Psalm 112 verse 1 and 3. That blessed is the man that fears God. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. You know wealth and riches shall be in his house hallelujah we define financial prosperity as freedom from poverty lack and the negative effects that come with them i'm just doing a quick recap um, and we saw how that some of the negative effects that come with being poor includes fear insecurity greed self-centeredness unrighteousness and um we also define prosperity as having abundant financial supplies alongside the means to replenish, multiply, and sustain its availability. We define poverty as a perpetual state of lack and insufficiency of financial resources, often characterized by lack of productivity. Hallelujah. And um, we establish the fact that the church has greatly suffered in this area largely because um, there have been incomplete teachings about prosperity either an emphasis on the spiritual side to tithe and give and, and expect blessings or people have gone to the other side into materialism and carnality and this lust for money both of them are wrong hallelujah I told us how that many pastors do not have financial literacy and how that the church is also an institution. An institution is a platform for the transference of knowledge. There are many well-meaning pastors. They are anointed. They love the Lord. They are born again. They are very sincere people. They love the sheep of God, but they lack financial literacy. So when it comes, they either do not touch on that subject and leave people to just guess whatever they feel about finances or they touch it but they limit it to what they know and usually it's just tithing and offering and they stop there 
And so the, the general teaching to the congregation is tight and give and then expect blessings. And there are so many people in the body of Christ, favor comes, but lack of financial literacy and the formula for wealth keeps driving it out of their lives. Right? And I told us that many preachers do not even know why they are wealthy. They think they are wealthy because they are preaching the gospel. That's not true. You will know at the end of the teaching tonight. Praise the Lord. And so we seek to, in this series, go direct, straight to the point. That's why I'm not even talking about tithing and giving and all of that. We have been able to touch that. I want to believe that the average committed person in this place already has this foundational knowledge about tithing as the key that opens the heavens and so on and so forth. I want to teach us something that anyone can use and be rich, not just a preacher. The gospel of prosperity we are teaching in Nigeria will only make a preacher rich. If you are not a preacher, you will not be rich from it. What I want to teach you will make anyone. I don't care what the situation is. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so we considered a few things um why so many people are poor in the last um discussion that we had we said how that they have not decided to be wealthy they do not have a goal to be wealthy a clear goal lack of understanding the real formula for wealth and abundance and then most importantly lack of the mental transition and i think the media department did justice on that reminding us all through the week never forget this that the biggest difference between the rich and the poor is not the money in their pocket the money in your pocket is a receipt for having a healthy mindset or otherwise this money the naira is only a physical expression praise the lord just a physical expression finance can i have some money help me so that some people will wake up now. There are some of you who will never understand this teaching until you see real money. Just any amount, just something to hold. And then we considered the myths and the mindsets that keep people poor. I taught us how that there are mentalities, there are, there are sayings, there are cliches that have been accepted in our society that keep people poor number one is that i'm just doing a quick recap number one is that money and abundance is carnal evil or unnecessary praise the lord there have been this illusion this this teaching okay thank you very much there have been this teaching this illusion that money and abundance is carnal please don't let anyone fool you money is very important say it one more time if you ever trivialize the importance of money in your life you will pay for it dearly by the grace of god i love you too much to lie to you and to spiritualize out the importance of money finance is very important to the quality of your life to your assignment and to the advancement of the kingdom Say one more time, money is very important. The Bible never says money is the root of evil. It says the love of money. And the word there is eros, lust for money. The kind of ungodly passion to seek money that will take you to hell. That's what the Bible says is evil. It never said money is the root of all evil. Hallelujah. Myth number two. If God really wants me rich, he will make me rich. Another wrong mindset. So many people justify their poverty as being the will of God. And sadly, many of our elder ones, our lovely parents, lovely fathers and mothers, most of them, their generation grew with that illusion of the exclusive sovereignty of God. The meaning of that is God is sovereign he does whatever he wants human beings have no contribution to the outcome of their destiny so we have agreed and most of our parents transferred that mindset to us praise the lord wrong mindset if god really wants me rich he will make me rich if god wants you to bath he will bath you 
If God wants you to go to school, he will take you to school. No, no, no. We, we have common sense in every other area except finances. When you are hungry, God does not open the fridge for you. He grants you life and energy. And you take advantage of that energy and you go and open your fridge and feed yourself. Right? Understand this. At every point in your Christian journey, there will always be a role you have to play in determining the outcome of your destiny. Bishop Oyedeko said, every Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life is an irresponsible Christianity. There will always be a part to play if you be willing and obedient. If there is good in the land, but if you are willing and obedient. Hallelujah. So that's the second myth. Myth number three, which has brought a lot of deception to the body of Christ, is that tithing is the one and only key to abundance. How many sincere preachers, godly preachers, lovely, wonderful, God-fearing preachers have misled millions of people in Nigeria into the illusion that the moment you are tithing, that is the one and only thing you need to do and everything will change automatically. I am telling you this by the word of the Lord. That's not an accurate teaching. It's a sincere teaching, but it's not true. If that were true, I guarantee you that 90% of the Christians around who have been faithful titers would have had their status change radically. Is that true? Tithing is the law of open heavens. It opens your heavens so that everything you do under that open heavens prospers. But that's not the only key. He said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Not the key. Keys. Meaning tithing and giving as powerful as they are. They are the keys that release the treasures from the realm of the spirit. But we must sustain the technology and the formula to make it manifest here and now in our life. Say amen. Myth number four. That's the one you find around so many people in our society today. And I believe some of us were shocked. I, I remember one person talking to me. I think over last week or so and he said he was surprised when I mentioned this if I can just have a business idea and capital I will be rich it's a lie tell your neighbor it's not true turn to your neighbor and say it's not true many of us think the reason <laughs> see many people still laughing they are still reminiscing on the seriousness of what I said it's as serious as what I'm saying now all I need is 20,000 and I have that um, small shop or I have my fura or yogurt, my stand or I have whatever it is. So many people believe that this is all they need. Give me this plus the business idea I have and I am rich. I can, I can bet you with my life I can bet you with my life that you will not be rich that way. You will enjoy money for a few weeks or months or highest a year and crash back to where you were. I have tried this too many times with people. Too many times. Businessman, sit down quietly this night and listen. There are so many people moving around. I'm a businessman. I'm a businessman. What do you really need? Capital. Oh God, it's not capital. No, sir. No, sir. I prove you wrong a thousand times. It's not capital. I'm not daft. I know what I'm saying. It's not capital. Because your physical environment will always be a reflection of your mindset. Give a poor man money. How many who want to be a millionaire have you had in Nigeria that got the one million and were able to still remain millionaires after one year? Have you not heard of people who won lotteries? Ten million dollars. One million dollars. Hundred thousand dollars. They laugh about it. How many people have won cars and from Gulda, uh, Maltina, Indomie, they stand on your television screen and they snap them with the money. 
few months later their mindset has eaten everything in their physical reality because until the adjustment takes place here nothing you do physically will supplement for a wrong mindset are we blessed so the biggest difference between the rich and the poor is their mindset the biggest difference this is a receipt if I buy this um, this gadget they will give me a receipt the receipt is a sign that I have bought it not a sign that I will buy it it's a sign that I have bought it look at me this that I'm holding if it comes into your life it's only a receipt it's not the reason why you are rich it's the proof that you are rich are you getting me now physical cash coming into your hands is not the reason why you are rich this is the receipt that you are rich is God speaking to us so if this has not come into your life then it is a sign that you are not rich you see that the rich are not those who have this they necessarily had to have it because they are rich praise the Lord so we discuss that very quickly and then number five the myth we considered was entitlement mentality remember the feeling that someone is responsible for your success and prosperity I said it was many of us are angry with our parents we're angry with our bosses in office we're angry with our uncles and aunties angry with the rich people in our family because we think that they are supposed to bless us because they are rich and we are offended we are bitter against them and their loved ones it's an entitlement mentality it's one of the greatest killers of wealth potentials in africa so the moment you become rich everybody in your family is leeching onto you hoping that you will meet their needs there are some people even angry cursing you it will never be well with you you saw my rent expire and you didn't come to pay it entitlement mentality that mentality that transfers the responsibility of your financial destiny to someone else to pay the price for you and then you receive the result i told us last week that how many poor people go to meet rich people for help sir my rent has expired how much is the rent 250,000 or 300,000 or 500,000 or whatever it is and then the rich man counts the money and gives the poor man and he never sits down to say uncle by the way I'm tired of coming to beg you is there something you will do to teach me they will never say that what will they say thank you and they will go back and carry their stumbling block of poverty and return after one year asking the same thing again they will come back and find out that within that one year the uncle has built another house they knock the house and they say your uncle does not live here again we are his tenants and you go back to his house his status has changed a thousand times and nothing has changed in the life of the same person praise the lord is god helping us so that very wrong mentality and then we, we started we stopped at how to be wealthy i was teaching us directly straight to the point without ambiguity how do you become rich number one you must decide to be wealthy i told us that many people do not decide to be wealthy they hate poverty they wish to be prosperous but they never decide to be wealthy the difference between a wish and a decision is that the difference between a wish and a decision is that a wish a wish is just a desire just a general desire over something a wish is a general desire are you getting my point now but a decision is a strong desire thank you a strong desire that is backed up by the willingness to pay the price and take responsibility 
the responsibility that will produce that outcome. Are you getting the point now? So many people have not decided to be rich. They hate poverty. They are angry about it. They admire wealthy people. They wish they sit down and keep their dreaming. But they have not decided. Say, I decide to be rich. Say, I decide to be wealthy. No, no, no. It's not carnal. Say it from with every sense of spirituality and seriousness. I decide to be rich. Hallelujah. It's not enough to say I hate poverty. How many people have said it? The more they say it, the closer it comes to them. Because that's not the key to exiting it out. Decision. Decision. Time does not change things. Time only reveals the true state of things. Only decisions change things. So if your level financially and that of your loved ones is going to change, don't wait for time. One day, go better is an illusion. It is your decision that will change it. Say amen. So decide to be wealthy and you must make your decision a goal. What is a goal? A goal is a desire that you have set as a project. You are ready to channel all your energy and your time to achieving it. Very important. If you do not set goals, you don't set a financial goal to be wealthy, you will never be rich. You will dream about it. You will see yourself in a dream rich. You will see yourself driving cars in a dream. You will see yourself building houses. It will never happen in your lifetime. It will stop in the realm of dreams there. How many people have dreamt of so many things? They get up in the morning laughing and happy. What happened? They say, my life must change. What happened? I had a dream. In the dream, I saw myself counting dollars. I saw myself counting pounds. In the dream, I saw myself building a house for my father. It will remain as a dream until you set it as a goal a goal enough to pursue it hallelujah and then the second the second key on how to be wealthy is that there is an exact formula for wealth and abundance i jumped that and that's what we're going to discuss today and then number three under how to be wealthy i taught us the mental transitions that bring wealth remember i told us that People are categorized into three. Please listen, follow very closely everywhere, inside and outside. I told us there are three kinds of people. Remember? As far as the distribution of wealth and mindset is concerned. Number one are people who have poverty mentality or poor mindset and naturally their poor physical reality. So their mindset and their physical realities are the same. Are we following, please? Are you getting me? So, here we have um, person A. His mindset is poor. His physical reality is poor. Number two, we have someone who has transited mentally. So, he has a wealthy mentality, but his physical reality is still poor. Are we there? And then number three, the wealthy place now. We have someone whose mentality is the wealth mentality and his physical environment has now become his mindset and i told us that every one of us can find our financial positions in these three illustrations most of us really most of us have poor physical realities by poor i don't mean you are begging for food but there is that state of perpetual insufficiency where people think about money, they worry about money. Look at pastors, every service is money, 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 money. You can settle the issue of finance and face more important issues. Finance is not the most important issue. So it's better to handle it once and then you can do some other things. Very important. So here we have the guy who has a poor mentality and his physical environment. He thinks the reason why he's poor is because he was born from a, a poor family. That may have some elements of truth, but that may not be the reason why he's currently poor. Give this person money, something in his mindset will reduce him back. Please, are you following my example? Say amen. And then, when he begins to transit mentally, right? We'll discuss that now. This guy begins to get the mindset of the rich. And all of a sudden, this environment starts pushing him away. Something in this environment starts pushing him because his mindset is changing. Now, at this point, level two, he has the mindset of the rich, 
but his physical condition is still of the poor. And I told you this is the most frustrating level in a man's life. Because when you talk to a rich man, he's impressed with your mindset. But then your physical reality is still like a poor man. So it's like you are in between the wealthy place and the place of poverty. But if you continue and you do what I'm about to show you shortly, you will move inevitably. No power in existence, I tell you, will stop you from stepping into the wealthy place. There is a place called the wealthy place. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We walk through water and through fire, but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place. Hallelujah. So let's start off tonight's teaching. Thank you, Jesus. I'll start tonight by examining the mindset of the rich versus the mindset of the poor. Write it very quickly. If you like, you can create a column into two. You can write one rich, the other one poor. Let's see how the rich think. Let's go into their minds and see how wealthy people think. Since we have established the fact that the prosperity of any man is not just from the physical money that comes, but the quality of his mental transition. There is a way that the wealthy think. There is a way that the rich think that brings financial resources to them. And there is a way that the poor think. Are you ready now? So we're going to be contrasting. And most of us are going to be seeing ourselves. We'll be seeing the mindsets that we have had, that we have preserved, that have been responsible for the poverty in our lives. And the goal is that as I teach, you begin to switch. Switch in your mind. The moment you see yourself in that category of the poor, you must begin to have a determination to change. Praise the Lord. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new and I will follow you forward. That's what he's doing in our minds right now. You make all things new, yes, you make all things new and I will follow you forward. The first difference between the rich and the poor is that the rich believe in taking responsibility for the outcome of their lives while the poor believe in luck and chance so write it under the category of the rich right that the rich believe in taking responsibility for the outcome of their lives they believe that they have a role to play in their wealth and financial abundance Every wealthy man, justly wealthy, not crooks, not corrupt people. Everyone justly wealthy, especially in the kingdom. They believe that they, there is a participation from their own end to determine the outcome of their lives. If they are to get into the wealthy place, they believe that. They believe in taking responsibility over their financial destiny. Still the same point. While the poor believe in luck and chance are you seeing i'm contrasting the mindsets now the poor believe in luck they believe in chance they believe in modern nature they hope that one day something will change they love that saying how can they lie Shiria? we are poor because god wants it that way right they are the ones who teach ale baku musamu oh god give them so that through them we will get it's a devilish mentality. Don't ever use that kind of word again. You are cursing yourself and cursing your destiny. You disqualify yourself from receiving the blessings of the kingdom. Say amen. So mindset number one, the rich believe in taking responsibility. Say after me, in the name of Jesus, I take responsibility for the outcome of my finances. In the name of Jesus, I take responsibility for my financial destiny. Say in the name of Jesus, I stop blaming parents. I stop blaming friends. I stop blaming circumstances. I take full responsibility for the outcome of my financial destiny. The moment you get to that point, you are beginning to be like the rich. 
my brother did not give me the hundred thousand otherwise i would have bought more goods and then my shop would have expanded you are a liar that's not the reason leave your brother alone and leave him in peace he may have done you bad but that's not the reason the poor love passing responsibility they love it when they say no it's because of government no that's not the reason the flaw of government revealed a flaw in you that had been there see that number two the rich are very disciplined and patient people underline the word discipline and patience the rich are very disciplined and patient people while the poor are very indisciplined and very impatient financially speaking and generally speaking the poor are so careless careless over their financial resources they are not disciplined most people think the rich are the ones who do get rich quick things no no the poor are the ones who always want sharp sharp money they always want all kinds of things every wealthy man understands the place of discipline and patience hallelujah is a wealthy man that will be worth 10 million naira and he will still be taking bike because he's trying to build his wealth a wealthy man will be 10 million naira worth yet he's staying in one small room because he's building a poor man if he gets 100 or 1 million naira he will rent a house of 600 thousand buy a suit of 100 thousand and die with the remaining 400 thousand very impatient people and there is a pressure listen especially for us the young people there is so much pressure in our generation to prove that you are making it right the moment someone graduates everybody is saying so how far how far how far what is happening and then we try to look for all kinds of ways you kill yourself and buy a suit of hundred thousand and that's all your savings home and abroad you buy a watch of twenty five thousand buy a shoe of thirty thousand and where you stand the people you are talking to are so poor they don't even know the difference between a watch of two thousand and a watch of twenty five thousand so the effort to impress them has been wasted hallelujah the rich are very disciplined people very disciplined they don't waste money go to the restaurant and see the way the poor eat you will be shocked you will think they just won a lottery madam eat they yes and you say bring it and they, they eat carelessly and foolishly and they spend all the money when their friends come in guy how far now I sit down, sit down, don't worry, don't worry, I will arrange things for you. This is a poor man. Look at what he's doing. It's, that one is not just giving. It's called financial carelessness. Are we learning something? And then he finds out that money is running away from him perpetually. Number three. The rich and wealthy believe in the law of process. They believe in the law of process. They know that it takes time to build wealth. Wealth, true wealth and prosperity is a function of time. The rich believe in the law of process. The poor always want results without process. That's why they get into all kinds of things. That's why they are deceived and swindled around. They get into all kinds of things because they are poor from the mind not from their business from the mind the poor like processes with they like results without process so you meet somebody around the park and the person calls you right like we have many in our in our society we've had so many stories of those people they call you around they act as though they are strangers or they send you an email you have just won two million us dollars or 10 million and you are not even afraid to read the mail you open it and smile and they write there they say don't tell anybody and you keep quiet you call your friend and say ah it's miracle service the prayer is it's not miracle service you are about to get into trouble how many people have been swindled of 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 their hard-earned money 
because of getting into schemings let me tell you anything that does not subscribe to the law of process run away from it breakthrough comes instantly but preparation from that for that breakthrough takes time it is the manifestation that is instant not the preparation in one day you can become a millionaire but after a season of preparation are you getting the point now you don't prepare one day no sir no sir it took joseph one day to become a prime minister but it took him 12 years to prepare for that position it took moses one day to exit uh, the people out just one plague overnight but it took him 40 years at the back side of the mountain hallelujah it took jesus three days only three days to fulfill his assignment he died was buried resurrected in three days the plan of salvation was over but it took him about 30 years to prepare so the rich where are we the rich believe in the law of process and the poor jump process right they jump a lot of process they want result sharp sharp someone just comes with a phone and say guy buy this phone now and you will sell it you didn't ask him where he got the money the person who is trying to sell the phone to you is looking like an arm robber and most likely he is and you are there because you want it sharp sharp may the lord deliver us from this sharp sharp mentality in the name of jesus christ never be under pressure to prove to people that i want to make it sharp sharp you want to start a shop in one day and you want to have 100 customers in one day you want to start a restaurant in one day and you want to be the leading that's what has led men of god to witchcraft they start a church and in one year they want 5,000 members in one year the man wants protocol in one year he wants to go on air in one year he wants to have the best of sound the best of church activity so he will have to go and, and bow down to some godless things how many people are in occults today many of our parents have joined fraternities and occults because they want sharp sharp money they join all kinds of clubs and societies that don't make sense they initiate them into godless things the rich and the wealthy the truly rich and the wealthy they know that it takes time it takes time it takes time warren buffett one of the well the world's wealthiest man I think he should be in his 70s or 80s right now. A billionaire. Over 70 billion dollars worth or thereabout. He started, he knew what I'm teaching you now. As early as age 8. But it took him at least 4 or 5 decades. Are you seeing that? The path to wealth can be accelerated but not rushed. You can accelerate it. God is the God of speed, not rush. He gives men speed, but he does not rush men. Tarry in Jerusalem. As desperate as I want the gospel of the kingdom to reach the earth. Tarry in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power. Say, I receive grace to follow the due process that brings lasting wealth. Say it one more time. I receive the grace to follow the due process. Hallelujah. Number four now. The rich always plan and set goals. The rich always plan and set goals. While the poor are always impulsive and reactive. Always impulsive. The rich always plan. If they want to build, they settle down. Like the Bible says, they count the cost. How much will it take us to build? Okay, it will take 7 million. How much do we have now? 200,000. It's nothing compared to what we want. What can 200,000 do right now? 200,000 can buy at least. We can buy four bags of cement and a few sharp sand. Come and pour it intimidate the devil with it put the cement there and pour the sand and go back home you are taking a step they plan 
but the, the, the poor, they behave, they can go out in one day. I've said it again, many of our parents do that. In one day, they go back and come up with things they don't plan for. This is how the poor, let a poor man enter a boutique. He just planned to go and get shoe. And his budget was 7,000. But he enters a boutique and the blue light is there. Everything is shining. And they say they just brought this. I mean, they just came from Italy. This is from Dubai. This is from Turkey. This is original. Touch it, feel it. And he's looking. Carelessness is about to happen right away. Because he's about to be erratic. He's under pressure. Tell about a guy, you don't pass this level now. And he say, oh yeah, how much, how much? He say, oh yeah, because of you. Bring 13K. He's paying. The, the 100,000 he took there was for something. But because there's no planning, he ended up buying something that was not, you bought a cloth that was not your size. You knew it was not your size, but they convinced you so much. The blue light made you to see it and you bought it. And you went home, you are angry with yourself, everybody, your friend. How about you're a bad friend, you didn't advise me. Whereas you were there bragging, feeling like a rich man. A wealthy man is not embarrassed. To tell you no this is not this is this is beyond my budget for now i will plan and i can come back there is nothing embarrassing say how about guy you you that you are staying in a 20 million naira house he tells you that's not the issue i work based on budget that's how the rich think poor people are always under pressure they just give you pocket money or you get your salary of of 30,000 and you are going and your plan is to go quietly to a restaurant where 500 naira can feed you. Somebody comes to push you to a restaurant that is bigger than your level. And then you go there and while you are buying food, you find some other people and they say, ah, your salary is there. We will die with you here until you buy this. And you end up spending half of your money. Have you seen that happen to our parents? They collect salary and over the weekend, the money is finished. They think it's because the money is small. The man was saying that when he was a primary staff, at a managerial level, weekend is still finishing his money because of that mindset. Always plan and set goals. Always plan and set goals. Don't be impulsive. Don't just do things because you have to do them. It's okay if you need to do them at that point and the reasons are justified. Otherwise, do not be embarrassed at all. Don't get into that pressure of pushing yourself to the wall. Set goals. Set goals. If you don't need a car, don't buy it. If you need only three trousers, work with three trousers. There's no reason having hundred trousers with nothing in your pocket. You flaunt trousers around and they look as if there's something in it. And there's why not invest in your mind? Praise the Lord. I've told us again and again in this place. Stop trying to look rich. Pay the price and be rich. There's nothing honorable about trying to look rich. Pay the price and be rich. You can see a wealthy man, especially here in the north. You can see somebody who is a multi-millionaire. And he can just wear his jalabia and wear his pants and just be smiling. No pressure. He can even enter a golf to the bank. Whereas the poor man collected loan of 7 million, bought a car of 5 million, rented an apartment of 2 million and will spend the rest of his life paying that debt. And the poor man just enters. There's nothing and he just enters. How are you? You see him using a simple phone. Whereas somebody, you ask the person, how much is it in your, your account? 500 naira. How much phone are you using? 130 iPhone. What? Six. You just bought it. It just came out and you bought it. Nobody to communicate to because you don't have any, any collection of rich, sensible people. Who are you sending a mail to? How is the mail going to increase your worth? Hallelujah. Say, I refuse to be under pressure. I set goals and I work with goals. Hallelujah. Number five, the rich see challenges as opportunities and stepping stones. Oh, how powerful. The rich see challenges as opportunities and stepping stones, while the poor see challenges as stumbling blocks 
and obstacles. Very powerful psychological difference between the rich and the poor. The rich, every time they see challenges, number one, they never call them problems. Rich men never say problem. They say challenges. Hallelujah. And they see challenges as a stepping stone. They see challenges as an opportunity to learn more. They see challenges as an opportunity to grow more. But poor people. Let a poor man start a business and it crashes. And you hear him regretting. It's you oh, that told me, I've, I've always hated poultry. I hate chickens. I hate poultry. They can die anyhow. And the, the rich man says, no, my own. I lost beds three times. Three sets. I lost 5,000 beds in one day. And the poor, I, I, I can't take that. And they remain poor. Because they are unwilling to step out of their comfort zone. The rich see challenges as opportunities look up please for a while how have you interpreted the challenges that have come in your life especially financial challenges hallelujah what is your interpretation of challenges do you see them as an opportunity to learn more to know more to access greater light or do you see them as stumbling blocks there are many people today many people today they refuse to go and get jobs because one time they got a job and they fired everybody in the company and they have seen that challenge as an obstacle and they want to avoid that embarrassment whereas somebody who was poor kept applying kept applying and now the person is working in an oil company say after me from today i see challenges as an opportunity to learn, to improve, and to grow. I change my attitude. I change my response towards challenges. Very powerful. Two people can go through the same thing. The experience will make one wiser and better and wealthier. Another, it will become the reason why he will never move forward. Hallelujah. You ask your parents, for instance, why have you not set up something now? They say, look, let me tell you, you are a small boy, that's why. In 1970, is it two or three? I can't remember exactly. I think we did something like that. And then your mother will concur. Yes, we did something like that. What did we even do? We started producing ice and nobody bought it. The ice will freeze there. They will take light. It will melt again. It will freeze there and the business packed up. And because of that, because of that, they have seen that challenge as an obstacle. They've seen it as a stumbling block. Hallelujah. Say, I refuse to see challenges as obstacles. When others are seeing obstacles, I see opportunities. Please say it. When others are seeing obstacles, I see opportunity. Your attitude towards challenges is what will determine whether that challenge will kill you or you will rise above it two people can have a carryover two people can have carryovers for one he just looks and says so this is how my life will end so i'm truly dull that thing they said is not a lie i'm seeing the proof right in front of me whereas somebody looks and says there's no problem this is a challenge I will come back and I will give it to life. Because of this thing, I will establish a university in the future. I'm on my way coming. I may cry right now, but I see it as an opportunity to rise. Whereas for somebody, he looks and says, if you like, call me a dollar, you are right. Are you getting what I'm saying? Two people will be um, intimidated and, and, and affected by armed robbers armed robbers will come into a street and rob every house is that good no but i'm saying they rob the house they seize jewelries seize everything two years after that robbery one family has renovated their house where they broke the glass they have improved on it the armed robbery gave them an opportunity to renovate the house have you seen people like that the door that they broke they now brought security doors whereas one neighbor is still angry using banana leaves to cover the place where they did the stealing and still angry you see him tie it and say everybody that comes to the house they come 
this is where this idiot came and stole our money two years afterwards he has seen that as an obstacle are you getting what i'm saying now he has refused to move forward whereas one has used the opportunity to renovate his house your attitude towards challenges will determine whether you will use them as ladders or they will become a load that will destroy you say after me in the name of jesus i change my attitude towards challenges say it again in the name of jesus i change my attitude towards challenges someone was fired two people were fired for one it became the beginning of the tragedy of his life 10 years after being fired he became a miserable man turned into a miserable husband turned into a miserable father and, and and the list goes on and on for someone the moment they fired him he said no the owner of this company does not have two heads i will make up my mind and in three years he's already employing 100 people attitude i know so many people who were fired and they went back to their boss after two or three years they said thank you for firing me it was the best thing that happened to me the giant in me was sleeping that 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 firing letter did something to me i got interested in the issue of finances when they wanted to lock us in the prison when we could not pay the sound right sometimes <laughs> challenges can be a gift brothers and sisters it will shake you the day the landlord says come out and he's packing your clothes out and you're saying, oh God, don't embarrass me. I will go. But just wait. In the night, I will run and give you your key. And he says, no way. This morning, here and now, carry your pregnant wife and your twins and go out of my house. And you are now, you are embarrassed. And you are moving with your wife, pregnant and twins. And people are saying, look at irresponsible men. How can this man, the twins, and then the woman is still pregnant? Sometimes, it will take you to the cave of Adulam, like David. And that's where you begin to sit down and say, look, something is wrong. I'm getting something wrong. Challenges really bring us to the place of destiny. They create defining moments in our lives. But your attitude towards challenges will determine whether you will stay there or not. Hallelujah. It's God speaking to us. So the rich see challenges as opportunities and stepping stones, while the poor see challenges as stumbling blocks and obstacles number six are you getting blessed the rich have great courage and persistence the rich have great courage and persistence whereas the poor easily give up poor people easily give up they start a business it does not work they quit they start building a house it does not work they quit but the rich they are courageous people when one door closes they force another one to open when one strategy fails, they start another one. Wealthy people are highly courageous people. They are persistent. Very persistent. Hallelujah. You can see somebody who is rich. Five years after he told you in the name of Jesus, I'm coming out of poverty. Nothing has changed in his life. But you come and meet him and his goal is still intact. You laugh at him and say, bros, why are you fooling yourself just just agree that it's not your turn to shine and the person will tell you i'm still reading the book five years from the time he made that decision he's still studying the books he's still growing he doesn't have a car yet but he's still growing he's still staying in the old house but he's still growing you knew him with that one trouser five years later on he's still wearing it but he's still growing that's a rich man his status will most certainly change what have you given up on god gave you the direction god gave you the grace but he never told you the road will be easy preachers lied to you that if you are anointed it will be a bed of roses preachers lied to you that if god is with you it will just be a walkover preachers lied to you that if you are anointed you will start a business and it will be flawless because the holy spirit is at work in your life that is a lie from the pit of hell failure is a prerequisite in the school of success you have nothing to tell me if you have not failed in life you have not earned the right to counsel me if you do not have a track record of failure 
what you see today as your failure will become your symbol of wealth it will become the throne that you will sit upon rich people have failed you cannot imagine you cannot imagine how many times they will start 10 businesses all of them will fail they will do a lot of things it will not work but persistence and courage when everybody is criticizing them they are busy working when everybody is saying why must you keep doing this eh? someone tries to ask two ladies out you ask the first one she says sorry i'm already engaged you ask the second one say no 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 god has already revealed my husband to me you are not the one after two opportunities you will never ask a lady again to get married to because you sit and say kai me I can't, I'm not a fool. I can't be taking embarrassments like that. You will marry, oh, let me tell you in advance. If you don't take the courage to continue, ladies, shout continue. Every door cannot be closed. No, sir. One door will most certainly open. Hallelujah. Very important. Are you a courageous person? Are you persistent over your goals? Or do you just give up easily? I refuse to give up in the name of Jesus. You're a pastor here. You, you started a walk and it looks like nothing is happening and you are truly called, but you're about to give up. You're a businessman about to give up. You're a family man about to give up. Refuse to give up. And I tell you, at the other side of your pain, is celebration like a woman right when she goes in to deliver there are times she may want to give up and the midwives and the nurses are encouraging her and telling her don't worry don't worry say is it like that for every woman or no, is only me they say it's like that just just give up don't, don't give up for instance and then they continue motivating her and finally the baby is out sometimes she may need to go through cs as painful as it is the baby still comes the Bible says, do not be weary in well-doing. He said, for we will reap in due season if you faint not. But if you faint, you will not reap. Say, I refuse to faint. Let me give us two more and then we'll move to the formula for wealth. Hallelujah. Ready? Number seven. The rich are great risk takers while the poor are always afraid to take risks wealthy people are great risk takers they step out of their comfort zone and they walk on water if i perish i perish if i fail i will learn from it if i succeed let god be praised poor people are the easy goers hey be careful oh eh? you want to buy a golf and start a transport business somebody said you know the way nigeria is they will go and hijack your car somewhere have you not seen people minding their business and now robbers entered and carried the car from the garage and went with it? The rich are great risk takers. Not foolish risk takers, but great risk takers. In 2010, when we were having the Kingdom Wealth Summit, I taught them that the spelling of faith in the world of finance is R-I-S-K. Spell it. R I S K. When you are spelling faith in the finance world, that's how it is spelled. You must take risks. You must take risks. Not foolish risks, but you must take risks. It's a risk to marry, it's a risk to be single, it's a risk to start a building project, it's a risk to get a job. Don't you know it's a risk to transport yourself from here to Sabo every day for work? Is that not true? You can have an accident. Something can happen. God forbid, but a crisis can break out. Something can happen that can affect you. Is it not a risk? But it's a risk worth taking. When you tell somebody you want to marry him, is it not a risk? You are willing to submit to a man whose ideologies you are not exactly, you are not 100% sure of. You don't know what he can become yet you are willing to do that it's a risk life is a risk not taking a risk is a bigger risk you must take risks this ministry is a risk nobody gave us a guarantee 
that crowds will be inside and outside faith is spelled r-i-s-k when the people were setting up the sound in the morning none of you signed an agreement that by five o'clock you will be here none of you signed an agreement but it took courage we had to step out haven't prayed haven't fasted we have believed god and we're taking a risk miracle service is a risk you don't know who is coming with whatever sickness people can bring the dead people can bring anybody but you, you are willing to take that risk are you willing to take risks or you are part of the easy people when i was in secondary school there was a barbie saloon called easy does it you do that for life you will fail oh just just take it easy don't don't do this customers didn't come today close your shop it's a sign that god is not with you who told you it's a sign that god is not with you it's a sign that you are growing it's only a witch as a baby who will just get up imagine that a woman gives birth to a child and he just stands up mommy where is the food that's a that's a wizard that's that's an illegitimate child that's that's a that's a, a breed between angels and men that's not a pure human being and jesus grew everybody say it jesus your king of kings he grew in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men if jesus grew you must grow hallelujah lastly number eight the difference between the rich and the poor the rich have a positive mental attitude please write write it write it down as fast as you can the rich have a positive mental attitude please pay attention to what i'm telling you because after this i'm about to teach you what i call the grand formula for wealth and abundance i give you a guarantee I give you a guarantee that anyone that diligently follows this, even the dullest of us, if you follow what I'm giving you, you will be rich. And rich does not mean buy a car, buy a house. That's survival. The rich, write it down please, have a positive mental attitude towards the opinion of others. The rich have a positive mental attitude towards the opinion of others and never let opinions kill their dreams. The rich have a positive mental attitude towards the opinion of others and never let opinions kill their dreams. While the poor are easily influenced. The poor have a poor esteem of themselves. The poor have a poor esteem of themselves and are easily influenced away from their dreams by the opinion of others. The poor, they fundamentally have a poor esteem of themselves. And so, when people begin to talk about them, they are easily influenced away from their dreams by the opinion of others. So many of us are here right now. So many of us are here. The opinions of people is what has stopped you from being rich. What will they say? What if I fail? Will they laugh at me? The other time, they saw me frying Akara and the news spread around Samaru. So what? So what about it? Have you forgotten that if you remain persistent, those who laugh at you will laugh with you? That the reason why they are laughing at you is because they are secretly intimidated by your persistence. Criticism is simply an opinion harshly expressed. It's an opinion. There are people today, Joshua Selman is to them a great man of God that they love. There are people today, Joshua Selman is a devil and a fake man of God. There are people, Joshua Selman is whatever they want to call. I learned by experience to ignore the opinion of others and to move forward if you follow what people say about your life they will kill you and ask others to come and see your dead body whether you do well they will talk about you whether you do bad they will talk about you they are still talking about jesus and we are still talking about satan everybody in between will be talked about 
So deliver yourself tonight in the name of Jesus Christ from the influence of the opinion of others. They are spreading rumors around that I like money. Is it true? No. Mind your business. Say, see, I heard that you are the one that said, I'm, I'm not, I'm not. What? Look, let me tell you. Trying to defend yourself is the quickest way of trying, of, of giving people an impression like what they are saying is true. They now start using wise sayings like there's no smoke without fire. There can be smoke without fire. Ask those who smoke cigarettes. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Sing it one more time. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. let them keep talking while you produce the results anybody can say what he wants to say about you please brothers and sisters hear me don't starve yourself of sleep because of what you think people are saying can i tell you something no matter what people say about you the world is full of troubles very soon they'll forget about your issue another issue will come and supersede your issue so you can as well let the sleeping dog lie are you getting what i'm saying now if a lady runs here right now and says this baby is joshua selman's baby i've told people i will only ask one question online how did you get pregnant online are you getting me not that i'll sit down and say hey, hey, hey i need to gather a committee now my reputation is at stake i'm a dead man already let the one who sent me defend him if he's comfortable with it fine and good ah i i will never stab myself sleep because he say, i called you i called you you didn't pick that's how all men of god are that's your opinion am i like that no so i go to bed learn to frustrate useless opinions in your life ah mama this and that is a wicked woman every time we come to fresh water the way she looks at us are you wicked no so mind your business but you start running around the whole new extension telling everybody how about you ma you know am i wicked is it not me that gave your child school fees no 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 save yourself all that nonsense rich people have a healthy mental attitude don't think they will not talk about you just like you have spoken about others let me assure you your turn is coming when you see someone gossiping and talking just pity him and nod your head because his own is coming good measure pressed down shaken together yes for sure you have not started a church and you are criticizing every man of god must it be like this must it be like that the day you start a church and for two months you are looking for one volunteer to be part of your ushering team at that point you will know it takes grace leadership wisdom and audacity when you see preachers preaching and you see men of god standing up to concord to what they are saying they can relate with it are you getting the point when you fast and pray the gentleman stood here to give testimony and he said it's not easy to stand here you would think it's easy to stand here and jump around until you come and stand here you wouldn't know whether you hold the mic with your left or right hand i once watched some a christian comedy show they were doing an auditioning for comedians these guys are supposed to be the funniest people in their various places and they came together and when they came together i was just looking i didn't laugh for one minute they were afraid their jokes disappeared archbishop benson idahosa said until you do what somebody has done twice don't talk about him after two years you mean this guy still has a small shop like this how about god don't fall our hand and then the day you open your own that looks like looks like a restaurant 
and you find out that nobody comes from morning till night you will do bonanza 50 percent nobody will still come at that point you go back to that bros and say bros you did try you're well done say after me in the name of jesus i have a healthy mental attitude about myself and i refuse to let the opinion of others kill my dream say it i refuse to let the opinion of others kill my dreams they will talk about you they will laugh they will scorn you it's a sign you are making progress may your life not be so boring that your critics ignore you may your life be the news in their secret place that every time they are talking they say my god they are trying to criticize you but they are announcing you by extension so many people came for koinonia as a result of criticism they came to find out what is all this how can a young man be so anointed and when they came some of them from outside their headache disappeared when they crossed in and they sat down at the end of that meeting they have brought more than 50 people to koinonia criticism can be a great tool of publicity don't stop yourself from shining is god speaking to us Ladies and gentlemen, I bring before you right now the grand formula for wealth and abundance. Pray in tongues for one minute. Your life is about to change right now. Please pray inside and outside, wherever you are. In one minute, I'd like you to pray. hallelujah the day I found this key I shouted I not Oyedepo's I will never be poor my own I shouted shouted where is the document let me sign out of poverty forever and ever till Jesus returns ready write this down the formula for wealth and abundance I told you there is an exact formula there is an exact formula. Ready? Write this down. The amount of money we receive. The amount of money we receive. Open bracket. Your wealth or your income. Your wealth or your income. The amount of money we receive will always write always in capital letter will always be in exact proportion the amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to then write colon number one there are three things i'm about to tell you now the amount of money we receive your wealth your income will always this is a law be in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what you do the amount of money you receive will always be in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what you do put in bracket the product or the service you offer the demand underline the word demand the demand for what you do number two your ability open bracket your skill expertise proficiency and then you can close it your ability to do what you do your ability to do what you do and number three the difficulty in replacing you The amount of money, listen, listen. The amount of money we receive, this is a law. Please listen. I'm giving you a key that will set you free forever. The amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to number one, 
the demand for what you do number two your ability to do it and number three the difficulty in replacing you look at what you just wrote the demand for what you do your ability to do what you do and the extent to which it is difficult to find another replacement to you this is the grand key the irrefutable law when you break prosperity to its unit the atom of prosperity is this The amount of money Joshua Selman will ever receive in his life is proportional to the demand for what I do. My ability to do what I do and the difficulty in replacing me. The difficulty in getting another alternative to me. Let's take it one by one. Number one, the demand for what you do. This is the formula for wealth, brothers and sisters. I searched and I found it. Every millionaire I studied, every billionaire I studied, every wealthy family, every wealthy church, every wealthy business subscribe to this formula. The amount of money where you are sitting right now looking at me, the amount of money that will come into your life will be in exact proportion of the demand for what you do, your ability to do what you do, and the difficulty in replacing you. Write this down. Never try to provide a service where there is no notable demand for it. Never try to provide a service where there is no demand for it. This is what makes a lot of people fail financially. You are answering a question nobody is asking. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Look at this. Look at this. If, if this is my business for instance the level to which I will succeed in this business is first if there is a demand for this is that true? if there is no demand for this who will pay you for it? nobody so many people are starting companies and corporations without asking whether there is a notable demand for what you are trying to provide the first key to wealth is to realize that you are only paid for something when there is a demand for it if there are no children in a place why will you sell pampas there is no demand for it are you getting what i'm saying never try to start a business when you want to get a job Trust God to get a job in a place, a corporation, a firm, where there is a demand for their service. Nitel in Nigeria is almost packed out because technology diminished the demand for their service. Are you seeing that now? When there was a demand, what happened? They were rich. They had money. Are you getting what I'm saying? Typewriters. Those who sell typewriters today, if they did not change, will they be rich? Because there is no more demand. Never try to provide any service when there is no demand. This is the reason why ministers have their churches full. Because there is a demand for what they are giving. They think they are rich because they are preaching the gospel. Hear me, Koinonia. This crowd, inside and outside, is here tonight because there is a demand. Are you getting what I'm saying? This ministry is excelling not just because God called us. God called us, yes, but we are responding to a demand. 
For as long as there is a demand for my anointing, I remain relevant. For as long as there is a demand for the dimensions of the realities of the kingdom that I teach, they will continue to be relevant. The amount of money we receive will be in exact proportion not to what you do, the demand for it. You started a business. You never found out whether there was a demand for it. That's why when wealthy people are about to come to Africa and start businesses, the first thing they do is they send envoys, representatives, to come and give them statistics. They are testing the waters to see if there will be a demand. They will never come to Africa until they find out that there is a demand to the size to which even if they fail, they will still succeed. That's how the wealthy think. Is God speaking to us? Write this down. Continue the points that you wrote at first. You either create a demand first. When you want to provide any kind of service, spiritual, financial, educational, whatever, you must either create a demand for it first. Open bracket. Through exposure, orientation, and advertisement. You either create a demand for it or satisfy an existing demand. Look up, please. Okay, write, write it down and look up. You either create a demand for what you want to offer. That means make people want it or see that they already want it by default and supply it. Let me tell you something. Look up. This is the key behind the wealth of evil people. I'm not being biased. An evil man will never supply anything he has not ascertained a demand for. That's the reason why when others are running away somewhere, he knows there will be a demand for that thing and then he will go there. Unconsciously, unconsciously, many people do not know this is the law that they are fulfilling. As at, as at when the phones come into Nigeria, It depends on which one you are talking about. Generally, Nitel had one thing like that. What our protocol used now, right? That's how we started. Now, watch this. Did you know that until phones came in terms, I mean, our wireless mobile communication now. Until phones came, we, we had that one that you dial, right? You touch it and then it goes back. You continue and then it goes back. 73142 and then your state code. You, you remember that, right? Watch this. Some people sat down at the cutting edge of technology and they said, no, we have something to offer. And this is what they said. These people do not know about that possibility. So we use advertisement to create a demand. When they brought out Indomie in Nigeria, what happened? They use advertisement and you are watching. They show a beautiful lady and she picks up the, the Indomie and she's taking it and you are just celebrating what they are doing is they are creating a demand immediately after that you say eh, please go and buy me um, this and that and that they create a demand for it or they meet an existing demand write this down always respond to demands and you will be rich respond to demands I think it was the last school of ministry students. I was teaching them on finance in school of ministry. And I told them, if I'm to do business in a crusade ground, I won't sell pure water. If I'm to do business in a crusade ground, I will do mobile toilets. Is there a demand for it? You are joking. You are joking. Sooner or later, no matter how bold you stand, you are in a crusade ground from 3 p.m. in the afternoon. For a night vigil, Abba, you will need to ease yourself. And I won't be there. You will even know it's my own. But you just see me smiling. The goodness of God. As they are worshiping, I will lift my hands. Because the amount of money that comes to me is dependent on the demand. So I look for the demand. What are they looking for so desperately? that they will be willing to do anything. 
may God help you that you are not purging on that crusade ground. You would demand my service a thousand times. And that's good for me. That's exactly the kind of atmosphere I want. As far as my business is concerned. It may look messy, but forget the money is not dirty. You don't defecate on the money. Right? Are you learning something tonight? When a demand for a value or service becomes overwhelming, I want to give you a secret, a big secret right now. Many of you will not imagine how much you would have paid for if you were in a business class. When a demand for a value or service becomes overwhelming or very high, listen, your wealth index grows faster and you can easily get back to your feet even when your business crashes. Let me explain to you what I mean. There is a way, there is a way there can be so much demand on your product that even if you mess up, the demand is too high that you become too big to fail. Are you getting what I'm saying? Absolutely. Look at this. How many days did fuel go off in Nigeria? I mean, I know there are still, there are still pieces of scarcity, but remember the time when all the marketers went? Within 72 hours, Nigeria lost billions. It literally crippled them because of the huge demand for energy. Is that true? Huge demand for energy. There are certain values that when you provide, it becomes almost, humanly speaking, impossible to fail because the demand is, is, is overwhelming. Pure water. Pure water will never fail in Nigeria till Jesus comes. For as long as there is sun, there will be need for it. We drink water like camels in Nigeria. You finish one bag of have you seen people take water somebody will just take and hold one and squeeze it like an orange take another one take another one that's money going five five naira or ten naira if it's cold right and 15 naira just disappeared right now bang, 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 bang. and the person selling it is smiling and the person consuming it is paying every day you must bath at least i believe yes you should bath i'm speaking to the wider audience not just you there are thousands of people full right so the demand for soap will never stop and the demand is so high every day somebody's birthday photographers will never run out are you getting me restaurants will never pack out if they pack out is a demonic thing because you are supposed to eat normally three times a day. If you are busy or you don't have money at least once. If you are fasting, that's alright. Praise God. I'm showing you that so many people are poor because they have not responded to demands. Those who have responded to the demands are the ones who are rich. Because you will pay for anything you cannot do for yourself. It's a law. Whatever you cannot do, Guys keep paying in the restaurant every day because they cannot do it for themselves. Always write this down please. Let's hurry up. Always be absolutely sure that there is sufficient and sustainable demand for the value or service you wish to provide before working on providing it. I repeat. Always be absolutely sure that there is sufficient and sustainable demand for the value or service you wish to provide before working on providing it. Never get to do something without ascertaining that there will be consistent and sustainable demand for it. The amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to number one, the demand. The demand. Watch this. Let me bring it to ministry so that you will understand. Watch this. As a man of God, do you know the reason why the healing and miracle ministries 
have crowds and inevitably have finances and the rest because there is a high demand for that grace are you getting me there is a high demand usually the largest crowds come during the miracle service there are people who because of distance cannot come for every service but during the miracle service they will pay the price and come hallelujah because there is a demand so if the demand for this anointing continues koinonia will only keep getting higher and higher are you getting what i'm saying now is there a demand for what you do or are you just doing it have you ascertained that there is a demand the office where you are working is one thing for you to be employed but it's another thing for the service you are receiving to be needed never try to answer a question nobody is asking The second point, your ability to do what you do. We said the amount of money you receive will be in exact proportion to your ability, your skill, your expertise. Ability and skill and expertise is how you become a leader and a pace setter in what you currently do. Skill and ability. There is a direct relationship between skill and financial abundance please never forget this there is a direct relationship between skill between expertise between competence and proficiency and financial abundance it's not enough to be anointed it's not enough to have something to say or just to talk there must be skill there must be skill you are enjoying what he's playing because although we're in a spiritual house there is skill you see that i'm preaching you think i'm just talking until i break down the psychological implication of the things i'm saying and you see all the things that are interplaying in the midst of my sermon you are laughing in the midst of my sermon i'm rebuking you in the midst of my sermon i'm challenging you all of this requires skill it's not just anointing are you getting what I'm saying? Your ability to do what you do. I love how some people that peel orange. Have you seen those people that sell orange? They are so flawless. You bring orange to them and you see them talking. They are just talking and peeling it. When you see a master do something, it becomes flawless. That's how you must be if you want to be rich. Don't think rich people are dafts. Rich people are highly skilled people in the area where they function those who are promoted in every organization are those who are skilled many believers do not pay attention to skill and expertise we pray in tongues we fast but organize any program for capacity building and see people reject it they think it's carnal they think it's not spiritual so the man sets up the church and he does not know how to speak to people you enter the presence of rich people and you don't know the skill to communicate to them and so they throw you out of that place you speak to business people and you don't have the skill to talk to them ministry is not about preaching and throwing people on the ground there is a lot of skill and proficiency to it if you think it's so easy try it and you will be shocked that you'll be saying what everybody should laugh and they'll be looking at you with anger that's why you won't know what to say again you will know that it's not just about cracking jokes. There is a skill, not just a spirit. The Bible says, and David led the people with the integrity of heart and the skillfulness of hands. David did not throw Goliath just through the anointing. It took skill. The Benjamites, theologically speaking, they were so skilled in throwing slings that they could diverge arrows. In other words, you could shoot an arrow and they will use a sling and diverge it. They were that skilled. So don't you think God just came upon this guy. Samson was not just anointed alone. He was skilled. Bezalel. Have you read about Bezalel? The spirit of creativity and excellence came upon him. The three Hebrew boys. The Bible says and in all the matters that they were tested in. They were found ten times better. How many times? In what you do. 
do you have ability or just desire you set up a restaurant nobody likes your food something is wrong there is a demand for it but there is no skill and you think it's demons you are fasting and running around your parlor whereas you should go and settle down and meet a ketra not a mediocre a ketra buy the truth it will cost you buy the truth wealthy people are the ones who can pay one million naira to bring a mentor into their lives to teach them something you would think it's a waste you are paying somebody one million just to talk to you but they value it that much how many believers can pay for knowledge they don't want to they just want to receive average and so they remain mediocre is God speaking to us it takes skill what he's playing he didn't just learn it by the anointing an anointing came upon his skill the fire will never fall until there is a sacrifice what skill are you lifting up to God to anoint he said he will anoint the works of your hands I'm not just talking of business I'm talking of skillful business see yet thou a man diligent 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 skillful many preachers are not skillful many business people are not skillful many employers and employees are not skillful skill is not just an impartation it is learned it is learned it will cost you you will sit at the feet of uncommon mentors to learn but are you willing everybody say ability i made a vow in my life that everything every service and every value i want to offer my generation i will be a master in it let me tell you as you see me like this don't don't let these suits and all these things deceive you i'm such a workaholic you would not like my life you will like me when you see me on suit standing if you come close to me you will run away from me because my life is irritating there's no room for laziness whatsoever there are things I do every day no matter how much I'm tired. Do you think preparing for this, you don't want to know how many books were read. You don't know how many books I read, how many materials I consult to just bring one message. One message that you just hear for two hours. You don't become wealthy when you are lazy if you must bring facts. How many videos I've downloaded on YouTube listen to them in fasting and prayer converted them to mp3s to listen to them listen to three hours six hours videos and summarize them in major points work on them edit the part of them that is unscriptural and add a scriptural touch to it that's hard work brother and all that is for one sermon that you just receive and say wow the sermon is impressive are you getting what i'm saying I returned back we we went to be there on saturday and then on sunday i was there on monday tuesday i passed through abuja to kogi state to go and greet the family of of our dear one who transited and from there i returned the school of ministry students were there i think it was was it yesterday right i returned as i returned i just went to take my bath and rush we were here having lectures from six to about past ten i had barely rested when i got up and then i had to plan do a lot of things had to run to town see a few people this afternoon i am here first thing tomorrow morning i'm off to kaduna we have a meeting in kaduna from kaduna we're passing straight to kano for an evening meeting sunday we are back three o'clock on the dot there is lecture school of ministry monday there is counseling from morning till night and next week is my birthday hello don't you ever hold on don't talk we'll talk about birthday after the service if you ever think wealthy people do not deserve their money change your mind tonight you don't know how hard they work there are people six o'clock their shops are open they close past 12. there are others who open to 12 and they close to seven skill diligence 
you get up and you say you're a motivational speaker and they ask you what is success say, according to Brian Tracy according to you what is it you get up and you're a preacher and all you are doing is copying and pasting messages as you are preaching they'll help you complete it and tell you where you got the sermon from and they will tell you the site you downloaded no originality it takes skill you think it's easy to to buttress points i can communicate any point and sing a song to support it listen it's not just anointing it is skill right you know how many things the worship team people don't eat to sing well you just know every time you hear them you are kneeling down find out how many things are out of bounds for them things they love so much he that desires mastery is temperate in all things what are you willing to give up to be skillful don't just say ah apostle is blessed guy koinonia is lucky oh wait until you see our leadership trainings wait and see the 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 the, the workshops and the retreats that we have for our leaders wait and see the way we build them you come and see the the various departments you think these guys are just standing by default look at the ushers standing and position they have been trained to be sensitive to the anointing go for a meeting somewhere and see how people break chairs and wound themselves but you before you get to the ground somebody has come to hold you it's a skill because they are holding people who are bigger than them there is a skill we are that meticulous so don't just say god is prospering koinonia guys we are blessed we are blessed through skill hallelujah let's hurry up so we can stop somewhere skill and expertise is the key is the key to promotion and increased salary you see somebody who has been grumbling and hating his boss tell him be skillful be skillful then you can pray stop drumming at the gates of heaven when you are not skillful let me tell you something i humorously tell people if i'm your boss and you are not skillful i can be a good pastor to you but i'll fire you and i'll fire you because i'm a serious christian hallelujah i will never entertain a worker in church for instance i mean Maybe there is, I'm, I'm your boss in an office somewhere and you think because we are members of Koinonia, you are not serious, you will never get the job. Never get the job. I don't do all those kinds of things. Say, remember, we are from the same place. Whether we are from the same room, if you have not demonstrated the skill, if you are so much of a liability for me, I will bless you with direct money so that you will go, but not to commit things to you. He gave unto some five, some two, and one act according to their several ability not their prayer request their ability their ability i hammer it on the workers to be skillful and it's my desire to see everybody who is at the sound of my voice you must become skillful at something you must become an expert in something you can't become jack of all trades and master of none you have to lay your hands on something be a master and I guarantee you, you're on your way to the wealthy place. You see the implication of the formula you were just jumping around on? Demand for your service is not enough. You must have both the psychological and intellectual know-how to satisfy that demand. Write it down. Demand for your service is not enough. You must have both the psychological and intellectual know-how to satisfy the demand. The person who babs me is here in Koinonia. He is so skillful. I love him so much and he babs me. No matter how you love me, I will not submit my head to you to play around with. I don't have that luxury. I love you. I can, I, can, I can help you, I can teach you, but I won't do that. How many people are not skillful in what they do? We are prayerful, but we are not skillful. Say, I receive grace to be skillful. Let me tell you the truth. Skill is an asset. Skill is an asset. 
if this guy is so broke if he is so broke today that nothing moves all he needs to do is go to a hotel in Abuja just ask for permission to sit somewhere and then he will begin to play and someone will see him and say can you come and play for one program what's your cost and he uses other psychological factors and walks his way out of poverty forever because of skill the next level of your life is at the mercy of your skill not at the mercy of God alone at the mercy of your skill man of God your preaching skill will determine the next level of ministry your leadership skill your financial intelligence what you are receiving right now there are people standing outside no seats for them there are people looking through the window they are passionate to receive that skill and I guarantee you in a short time their lives will show meditate on these things the Bible says give yourself wholly to them that your profiting will appear unto all there is nothing as lovely as an anointed person who is skillful it's a combination of grace and power anointed and skillful not only that you are anointed to sing you know the rudiments of music that will make you exceptional you are a businessman you are not just a businessman offering services you are exceptionally skilled when your contemporaries look at you they name you after your competence you walk in your office and they give you a name that is synonymous to skill even your enemies will recommend you and say please promote this guy we hate him but there is nobody in this company who can do it as him i gave you a story of somebody in this country he works three jobs three jobs and he works only three times in a week he's so skillful he's the brain behind many successful companies in nigeria I will not mention the names of the companies you'll be surprised they beg him he works only three times three times in a week and the minimum salary he gets for every one of those jobs is five hundred thousand. minimum and he works only three times skill will defy race skill will defy gender skill will defy age if you are skillful the world will honor you that's why wole soinka received the nobel prize nobody said you are from africa that's why zuckerberg at 30 or 31 is still among the world's richest people skill defies age i'm giving you a key if you sit down in mediocrity you will beg for bread i choose to be skillful in every area i choose to be exceptional i avoid premature manifestation while others are running let them run i will stay back and i will sharpen the knife you are a drummer be skillful i've hammered on these guys you don't want to know how skillful these guys are i've seen their diligence our technical people we emphasize skill not just anointing brothers and sisters it takes skill it takes skill it takes skill the difference between cnn or bbc and one christian channel around that looks as if the television is not working well is skill it's not anointing you watch some channels and you are angry you are angry did they have to do it this way they want cheap labor rather than going to call a media consultant and pay him to produce something that is world class and coordinate this they refuse they say there's one brother who offered to help us and they remain in mediocrity to their detriment powerful message from the throne but nobody can listen many people try to write books and they don't consult with people they bring out a book that is the message is deep but the skill the artistry in writing it is not there td jakes wrote one skillful book woman thou at loose and he made four million dollars from one book four million dollars multiply that by 210 and it will give you the naira equivalent one man's skill build him out of poverty one skill you have written 10 books nobody even knows because you wrote every you wrote like you are talking they didn't teach you that there is a skill you stood somewhere 
and you sang a song and the people in the program vowed that they would never bring you for that meeting again were they blessed yes were they embarrassed yes why you had anointing without skill you had access to cook for a millionaire you would have been his personal chef you blew that moment you were praying in tongues in the kitchen but there was no skill the food burned everything went wrong skill papa adeboye said this himself he said when the redeemed campground started he said that they they paid very little attention to the aesthetics of the place they were more focused on the spiritual impact so people would come ceos managers billionaires will come and sit down and heat will will disturb them and it was making everything uncomfortable and god spoke to him and he said a ceo has ac in his office in his jeep he has ac in his parlor bedroom kitchen everywhere there is ac and then he comes to a very established ministry like that and heat is destroying him and he said they started making plans to add to the aesthetics of the place skill 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 let me talk on the last point and then we'll find somewhere to stop skill is an asset it has rewarded me i have seen the fruit of skill in my life i have seen it exceptionally as i travel to go for meetings i not only see the beauty of anointing i see the excellency of being skillful the bible says study to show yourself approved a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word skillfully dividing it when i go for meetings we go together with the protocol and the worship people and i watch them as they look at me when they say let's now welcome apostle joshua sermon and people are clapping i'm happy because i have the skill there's nothing you can do about it i have it i paid the price and god gave it i am grateful but i'm not apologetic about it i know the people are going to be wow just give me 10 minutes of audience and i will shock you that's all i need and when i pick up the mic i know what to do with wise counsel make war i know that at the end of that meeting somebody will invite me again it's not pride is the truth you can be that confident skill please when you go back home throughout this week some of you as you go home just sit down and think of your life please don't be in a hurry to sleep you've been sleeping for years wake up this night and think and say look at how i've been playing with the opportunities god has been giving everything you do nobody demands what you do again because you are not skillful they ask you to supply clothes. You supplied nonsense. You packaged it in a rubbish way. You delivered it in, in an unintelligent and unprofessional way. And they vowed not to give you that opportunity again. We're on our way to better days. Now you can sing the song well. We're on our way to better days. It's not just a song. I'm on my way to better days. Hallelujah. Yesterday when I was coming from Abuja, a woman met me. And then when she met me, she wanted me to talk to her on some things. I spoke to her on a few things. And when I was talking to her, this woman was looking at me. And she said, what kind of human being are you? Where are you getting this? And I was on my way going. I said, on my way, I'm on my way rushing. And she said, please, can you give me a minute? And she ran to her room. And this woman brought out an envelope with dollars said take i said no, no 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 what is this please no no i'm not i'm not ready and she squeezed it into somebody and i said this is somebody's salary for how many months the gift of a man the skill of a man i don't talk too much about my private life but i just want to challenge you a bit it has nothing to do with age it has nothing to do with gender are you getting what i'm saying i hardly buy things for myself people bring it in honor skill do you know that your skill can take you out from where you are and bail you? Yes, you may be born in Nazareth, but don't die in Nazareth. You may be born in Nazareth. God is speaking to someone here. They think you are a non-entity, but may your skill prove them wrong. May your exceptional qualities prove them wrong. Number three, the difficulty in replacing you. 
write this word down to be valued means to not be easily replaceable to be valued means to not be easily replaceable to be valued means to not be easily replaceable to be valued means to not be easily replaceable write this down when your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage whatever you want to call it when your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage stands you out such that it becomes very difficult right when your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage stands you out such that it becomes very difficult to find a worthy alternative to you you will be very wealthy yeah you will when your uniqueness or your strategy or as we call it in the business world your competitive advantage when it is so unique that it stands you out you can get another Joshua Selman, but not easily. See that? There are many preachers, but there is only one Joshua Selman. There are many anointed men, but there is one Joshua Selman. No man can clone the grace. No man can, close the, can clone the skill. No man can clone the uniqueness. So you carve a niche that is free of competition. You carve a niche that is free of intimidation. You stand in a place where you are secured in your uniqueness because it's not easy to find a replacement. If you are easily replaceable, it's a sign that you will be broke. Let me tell you how you know you are not valued. Your absence is easily forgotten and ignored. When your absence is easily forgotten, when your absence is unnoticed, it's a sign that your impact is small. If I come to work in your company, even if it is one day, I will do something that will make you chase me like your life depends on it. It's called value. The amount of money that comes to you is dependent on the difficulty in finding an alternative to you. When there is no alternative to you, they will pay whatever price. You will name your price. You will name your price. Hallelujah. I have taught people these things. It's difficult to get another Mike. These guys are all skillful. It's difficult to get another Elijah. It's difficult to get them. No, they are all unique. David Dam is here. Come. All these guys you see, they are skilled people, but they have their uniqueness. There is a way David Dam is so unique, you cannot clone him, no matter what happens. There is a way Sam comes on stage and you know he's in a class of his own. What do you have in your life that truthfully you can say when it comes to this, God has put me in a class. Void of competition. Some of you, it's only trouble that you're in a class of your own. Gossiping. All these bad, bad things that are bad, bad qualities. That's what you are in a class of your own. Tonight, change. Everybody is selling. But there is a way you do yours. The day you don't open your shop, people come and there are five shops open, but they are waiting for you. They say, Abba, can't you buy? Say, mm. There is, I like that smile. There is a unique touch to what you do. There is a way you do what you do. You are the happiest staff in your corporation. The day you don't come, the entire workforce is gloomy. They are, they are sad. They miss you. Some of you, nobody is missing you right now. It's bad. It's bad. It's a serious issue. Think about it. Nobody is missing what you are giving. ATC called me this morning and they said they wanted to do a novelty football match in honor of my birthday. They said they want to play a football match with Koinonia to honor me on my birthday. I said, wow, that's so touching. Who would do it for you and when? 
it's a serious question i'm not intimidating you who has chosen to go out of his way to do something for you you are saying there is no money there are people they are chasing with money people bless me every day i say it in, with all humility it's not because i'm joshua selman when you are not easily replaceable you become an asset even to your enemies because they need you to remain in business they need your news to remain relevant even your enemies desire you to continue are you that unique or you are just general i'm a general businessman general talkative what do you sell television what is unique about why should i come and buy tv from you and not from someone else do you have that uniqueness what do you do i plot who have you plotted many people what is your uniqueness is it that you plot on time is it that you plot well is it that the lady's hair will not pain her when you plot what is your uniqueness I refuse to be easily replaceable. I refuse it. Pray that prayer in one minute. I refuse it. Please pray. I'm showing you a key. We're not done yet. But I just want you to pray it. And then we'll do an evaluation quickly and we're out. Pray. They have belittled you because you are easily replaceable. You have refused to work on yourself. Money is available, I tell you money is available the millions are available you are not yet unique enough to be rich you have not qualified for the world you are grumbling about it you are complaining for five years you are still at that lower level somebody came a fresh graduate you paid his school fees he's now your boss to what degree are you easily replaceable pray Lord, may I be so unique that I become an asset, an asset to all and sundry. May my absence create a vacuum that cannot be easily filled. I'm ready to pay the price to be that unique, world class, not a local champion. You may start small but you hold on to strong convictions convictions that nothing will bend not cultural barriers convictions that nothing will bend not the limitations of your past convictions that nothing will bend pray an award-winning banker exceptional an award-winning ceo an award-winning man of god so anointed so unique you become a standard you become a leader you become a reference it's not a gift it's a reward it's not a gift hallelujah do this and in one day you will get what somebody will get in a lifetime Somebody who earns 100,000 per month. How much is that per year? How much is that per year? 1.2 million. How much is that in 20 years? 24 million. Someone can give it to you in one day as a reward to your uniqueness. The lifetime. One day my father looked at me and said, you are an old man. You are a young man with gray hair. What sort of person are you? May people look at you like Jesus and say, what wisdom is this? They look at you and wonder. They don't know what to say about you. Let me tell you something. Stop responding to your critics. The only response you give your critics is greater results. Greater results. Let them keep talking. The gap will be too wide. They will be forced to shut up. Continue moving. Let me tell you. What you are seeing in ministry right now. The level of excellence and the anointing is my preparation of yesterday. Tomorrow will show you what I'm doing today. In my mind, I've left this level. No, I've left this level. I've left this level. Gentiles, 
this is what will make gentiles come to your light and kings to their brightness millionaires will come and they will queue up they will queue up one woman asked me a question she said my son how come people come for counseling hundreds of people and they sit down from morning till night just to talk to you for two minutes and five minutes i didn't know what to tell her i said it's the same reason why a baba or a rich man will run backward to see a herbalist and the herbalist said turn back and he will turn back he knows what he's looking for when you hold the keys to the door they will look for you they will beg for you they will pay you to open the door oh i found my way out of poverty i found my way out i found my way out there is an eternal demand for what i do I will never run out of relevance there is an eternal demand for as long as there is one soul that is not yet saved there is a demand for as long as there is one sick body that is not healed there is a demand for as long as there is one person one family under oppression I will be needed for as long as there are people who need to be taught the principles of the kingdom, I will be needed. The, the, we are an endangered species. A million of me is still not enough to fulfill the demand. You say you are a leader. How uncommon are you? One time I went to speak in a, a, a small business leadership conference and I sat quietly. There were bank managers and people everybody came and was just bragging and talking stories and speaking rubbish i was very disappointed in all humility because i had high expectations for them i didn't know how much i had worked on myself they spoke and everybody spoke nonsense and i came out when i spoke brothers and sisters i tell you the truth and i i lie not i do not know how many complimentary cards and all of that and all of that and they were talking and i looked i said on a good day i will go to their offices and they will drive me out now they are following me with complimentary cards stop following success attract it through your diligence stop chasing money attract it through your skill stop chasing money pay the price and you will drive it away and it will refuse to go It is for this very reason that doctors, lawyers, engineers, soldiers are very rich. This very reason. Those we call professionals. This is why. Because of um, their, the kind of work they do requires a lot of skill. Right? Their professions require a lot of skill that cannot be learned informally and then they require public licensing and authorizations to function so it limits the number of people that can imitate them that's why they are rich if you've ever wondered why doctors are rich engineers architects and all of the people that do what we call professional courses is because there are licenses and to get the licenses and authorizations you need to pass through something and not everybody can do that so they are few and the demand for what they have is so high and they can set any price any price may you be so powerful that you can name your price and people will still pay you and say thank you for helping us the same way you queue in a filling station you are going to use your money to pay for the fuel but you will say thank you because it's so much in demand there is none of you under the sound of my voice who will work what i'm telling you and will not be rich no not one and the lord assured me as ever his mighty presence my altar is calling you my altar is, is calling you oh god my worship is calling you oh god my praise is calling you Show up tonight in a mighty way. My secret place 
is calling you oh god my prayer is calling you lord my worship is calling you lord we invoke your presence in this place my altar is calling you Lord, my altar is calling you. Hallelujah. I don't care what it is. Hear me? I don't care what it is. Every yoke of bondage and darkness, you will receive the full yoke of God's power tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I sense his anointing coming. Lord, my altar is calling you. My secret place is calling With my worship, I'm calling you. My worship, I'm calling you. Hallelujah. See, right from outside. Well, this started while I was praying. But right from outside, as soon as I entered, you know how prisoners move and they tie chains. I was hearing the noise of many chains right from outside as soon as the car dropped. Please take serious what we are sharing tonight. I want you to pray and say whatever degree of influence the devil is claiming over your life and your family. This night, this night, please pray. Shapa Pataka Baka Sebadiana Banda, Ipato Sepapa Brega de Bonsa Predina Bonda Tataya, Breka Teca Baka Sakapata Brega, yes, Lord. Yes, the mighty visitation. Get angry in your spirit. I hear the chains falling. Yes. I hear the chains. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Now listen, the Lord is showing me certain people. You have been experiencing movements in your body, especially your stomach. Please come out quickly. 
things move physically physically in your body please come out quickly to break every chain please save our time save our time we have a lot of things to deal with to break every chain break every chain to break every chain 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 of you in front lift your hands that devil of darkness lift your hands because that yoke is about to leave you that snake that moving object for many of you you will leave I'm going to count three just those of you in front I like you to shout Jesus on the count of three it will jump out of you many of you will feel it physically Physically, lift your hands, Father. Thank you. Let your fire out of three. Every stranger in this body on the mark said, Go one, two, three. Holy. someone is gone now your right leg you literally feel it move it's like a snake it moves there is a leg it ties your stomach literally you feel a lot of contraction it's going right now madam come hold my hands that's the lady I'm talking about bring her let her go now now out of her that devil of darkness shabakata tabakata sekete prosopata in the name of Jesus out go 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 I hear the chains falling I prophesy upon your life those of you standing Every foul devil of darkness that has found its way into your body that is responsible for all kinds of devilish infirmities. I command you to live now. I command you to live now. Return back to your seat rejoicing. We are going to take testimonies. Return back to your seat. Bring the lady. I hear the chains. I, I feel the chains falling. falling. Let her go. Out. Now. I hear the go. chains. I hear the chains falling. I see She's the chains. I see I the chains falling. Lift your hands, everybody. I hear the Hallelujah. 
God is going to deliver families right now. Please lift your hands. There will be representatives of families right now. Let me tell you something. There are all kinds of things speaking against families. See, I have an apostolic calling. I'm not a pastor. Are you getting me? My job is not to just motivate you. My job is to destroy and annihilate the works of darkness. Are you getting my point? So we are going to pray. The fire that fall in this place right now. There will be a baptism of fire. Some of you will feel the physical fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Shaka. At the count of three, you're going to shout that name, Jesus. And as you shout it, many of you will be shocked. The power of God will hit you like a tornado. I tell you, it's not just you. God is visiting families right now. Inside and outside, lift your voice. Worshippers, are you ready? At the count of three, with the clash of the cymbal with every instrument, shout at the top of your voice, my God, let the fire of the Spirit visit families. Are you ready right now? One, two, three. Jesus. That devil is a liar tonight. Please bring them out. Ultra, save time. Some of you join the ushers if they are too slow, please. I set it on fire. On fire. On fire. On fire. On fire. I set it. That devil that will not let you go must go for you tonight. I give the chains for it. Oh I give the chains. I give the chains. Lift your hands. There are still more people. Lift your hands, everybody. Just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. Just the clash of the cymbal. Lift your hands. Just the symbol. Lift your hands. The fire of God is still coming on people. Just lift your hands. Keep them lifted. Yes, Lord, let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Like the dew of heaven. Right now, let it fall. Let no one stand. Bring them out. Kopo to chopa. Zakata pata. Zakata kata tata tata. Mighty deliverance is happening in this place. I tell you, brothers and sisters, whatever said you will not go tonight must go for you. I give the chains falling. Falling. Lift your hands. While still praying. There are many of you, listen, please. I'm just flowing as the Holy Spirit is ministering to me. There are many of you that your sickness is not really sickness. Bring them out, please. Your sickness is a demonic oppression. What you need is not healing. For These are the kinds of people God will visit right now. Hallelujah. Because I'm seeing blue flames in the sky. 
Instrumentalists, don't stop playing, please. Hallelujah. Blue flames. And the Lord told me this one is to take away the spirits that sponsor sickness. Lift your hands. Many of you will be very surprised that certain things you have been calling diseases are yokes of darkness. Lift your hands, everybody. At the count of three, you're going to shout Jesus again. As you shout Jesus, many of you, those spirits will literally jump out. Jump out of your life. Are you ready now? Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands, everybody. Inside and outside, God is visiting everyone. At the count of seven, please, I want you to shout at the top of your voice. One, two, three, four, five. Get ready. Thank you, Jesus. Six, seven. Every spirit, spirits, spirits that sponsors sicknesses. Spirits, sicknesses, we only pray that sicknesses now. things that manifest like sicknesses you keep wasting your money on drugs it's leaving you don't wait till you come out deliverances are happening to people now all of those who are here Satan you and every demonic cohort at the count of three you are living right now hear me all these spirits now one Two, three, go, 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 out, 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 out now, out, out, come out now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, listen to me. This is very important. The Lord is showing me someone you've been having. It's like something is hooking you on your neck. Just your neck. You try to cough as if you want to cough it out. Please, who is the person? The Lord is ministering to me. There's somebody with that situation. Please, once I call your case, don't waste our time. We are trying to beat time. Honestly, there is done. It will go now. 
Sister, look at me. Look at me. That thing will disappear. Hold my hands. Out. Now. In the name of Jesus. Hold my hands. Place one hand on your throat. Out. Now. All of you just lay your hands there. Let me just pray at once. Please, we are not playing pranks. We are going to take some testimonies right away. There are people who are receiving miracles right now. Please be checking yourself. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Lay your hands. Father, let this demonic thing that is hooking your people go as a sign of the release you are bringing. Right now, in the name of Jesus, it leaves. What's wrong with this baby? Come. Are you the mother? Yes, sir. What's wrong with him? Sometimes he's still hiccup. Hiccups. Look at this boy, as small as he is. Stops now. In the name of Jesus Christ. He stops and does not return again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Does not return again. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for you, mother. Right now, help her, please. This, this cause of delay in your life is gone. Now, let her go. Leave her now. I proclaim you healed now. Please go back and check yourself. Go back and check yourself. Hallelujah. There is someone here. Hallelujah. Please, are you listening to me? It's like muzzle pull. You can just be moving and it will hook you. And you can just stand on your leg. This has been happening again and again. You feel it like muzzle pull. It just holds your leg. Move. Please, who is the person? Come, just lay your hands there. I'm praying for you right now. It will leave you right now. Let's just flow as the Holy Spirit. Please lay your hands there. It is going to go. Thank you, Jesus. Father, right now, let your power rest upon them and let that demonic thing go. Be gone now. 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 And as I lay my hands, just check yourself. Now. In the name of Jesus, do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. Check yourself now. Check yourself now. Check yourself. Check yourself. We'll take testimonies. Hallelujah. See, miracles are happening. Let's, let's just finish up and then we'll have time for testimonies. Hallelujah. Listen. The Lord is ministering to me and I'm seeing a lady. Hallelujah. Please, let's have our attention. The Lord is ministering to me and showing me a lady. You had, a, you saw a cat. Now, I don't know if it's physically or spiritually. You saw a cat. It came to fight with you. And from that time, you've not been feeling fine. You're feeling like there's something inside you. Who is the person? A cat. A cat. It's an encounter with a cat. The Lord showed me. Please, inside or outside. When we get that person, let, let the person come out quickly. Quickly. I need to pray for the person. This is very demonic and we must deal with it. A cat. You saw it. It came. I don't know what, what, happened, what transpired, but it's a very demonic thing. Please, when we have the people, let's deal with it. Now, I'm going to pray for the sick. Those who are sick. Please, all of you who are sick, just come and line up. If you can form two lines, one in front, one at the back. Very quickly. You came here sick. Please. This is a miracle service. We're here for you. We are not in a hurry. Ushers, please coordinate them or protocol whoever. Coordinate them. Just make two lines, one in front, one at the back. Please hurry up, worshipers. Give us a very powerful worship while we get the devil out of these people's lives. Thank you. Now it's time for God to minister to the sick.
while you're standing talk to the Lord and say Lord it's over it must leave me now exceedingly abundantly far above all you could ask I want you to see that sickness for the last time because it's leaving you according to Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your power to heal. Somebody help me. Please, as I lay hands on you, just begin to check yourself. Check yourself. What's the problem? You have a uh, father. Who brought this small girl? My auntie. Auntie, where are you? Who is who brought this small girl? Please, if you bring people that are very small, come with them. Is you? Come, auntie, come. What's wrong with her? She's sick. What do you mean she's sick? What's wrong with her? Cough. Eh? She's Oh, cough. Oh, okay. That's all right. God bless you. Sweetheart, look at me. You believe Jesus can heal you? You believe Jesus can heal you? Okay, I'll pray for you. Look at me. Help me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say, oh.
please let's have some people we, we want to move without stopping huh? this is not their work media where are you a representative should come and hold the mic please what what did you say i saw a cat a black cat assisting my mother is sick that devil is a liar it will leave you right now Tell your mother the end has come because the Lord just delivered you in a very mighty way. Father, perfect this deliverance. Now, let her go. Now! Hallelujah. Watch us, please continue. God bless you. See, I want to ask you, hear me. Hold on, let me explain something. There are some of you who, when I pray for you, the way you are looking at me, it's as if you don't believe what I did. I will ask you what is wrong. Are you getting me? I'm just flowing by the spirit. When I lay hands, some of you are trying to explain and you feel bad that I'm not responding. I don't need to know. The same power will solve the problem. Are you getting my point? Occasionally, I may ask you, it is just, I'm just flowing as the spirit is leading me, okay? Bless you, worshipers. Please continue. Son, please. Daniel, what? Just about two, three months ago. So I've taken to hospital. First hospital. What was the issue? What's the issue? Maybe like he put a lot of saliva in his mouth. His mouth has burned to one side. It's not working normal again. It's not smart again. It's not working. It looks like an imbecile. But he was not born like this. This thing started just about three months ago. Yes. What? See how wicked the devil is. What happened to him? I mean, what, what? According to him, he plays ball. He's a goalkeeper. According to him, he's a goalkeeper. He's, yes, he said he dived and hit his head on, on against stone. The first hospital I took to, they say it affected his head, his brain. But when I went to a teaching hospital last time, the consultant said there's nothing like that. But he fell to a pediatric uh, clinic, which we were, were given appointment by February. But I believe God will work upon that. I say we should come here this morning. Absolutely. Look at me. Boy, does he understand me? Don't worry, don't worry, sir. It's okay. Look at me. Jesus will heal you right now. Huh? Hmm? Look at the boy crying. It's okay, don't cry. This is why this meeting is put together. If this is the only guy that we heal and he experiences the love of Jesus, let me tell you, this sacrifice is worth it. Are you hearing me? Boy, look at me. Don't cry. Don't cry. It's all right. It's all right. See, look at the fire. Oh, mo please, please, somebody help this man with a handkerchief. I beg you, sir. Please, or anything. Please, let's let this is. Please, please, sir. It's it's all right. 
It's all right. You may not know how much he has been spending. You see, this is a wicked thing. You see what pains me? This is why we deal with these things. It's all right. Please. Please. Please, daddy, it's all right. Because I know why you are crying. You are not just crying because of him. You are crying because your finances are tight. Is that true? This is what the Lord is ministering to me. Is that true? Yes, sir. Why you are crying? You are not just crying. I have cancer. But uh, I'm here for both this, my son and my mother. I have been to you about two years ago. It's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Please help him with it. Please. Brothers and sisters, when a man cries, the situation, this is not. I think this man is a police officer also. When a police officer is crying, thank God for Koinonia. Boy, look at me. Can he talk? Say Jesus. Jesus. Say in the name of don't worry, I'll pray for you. That demon that is responsible for this, you are leaving this boy now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Out! Now! Come out of him! That issue of partial paralysis is gone. Right now. That saliva is gone. Stand up. Come on, look at me. Shout it. Say Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Give Jesus a shout. Say Jesus. Hallelujah. Look at the Father rejoicing. Look at. Give Jesus praise. This is why this meeting. The Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh has done me well. Hey. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. Come and dance, come and dance. Jehovah Jireh has done me well. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh has done me well. Come and join me. Stand up, you stand up. Stand up. You couldn't walk very well. Walk now. Come, follow me. Jump. 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 Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Look at me. You are family members. I prophesy to you, your finance changes now. I prophesy to you, and I use this as a point of contact. Whatever the devil has used to cripple your life, I speak it right now. See, when the Lord does a miracle, there is an anointing. You take advantage of it. Miracles are languages. I command everything that has refused to work in your life. This night, I command it to walk. I command it to walk. I command it to walk. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lord, the Lord increase you. Please, let's continue. Go ahead and play. God is doing great things. We're still going to take some more testimonies. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Go back, sir. We're going to take a few testimonies. And Benga, let's do it this way. There are people receiving miracles right now. See, the moment you find a miracle, don't sit back. Hallelujah. Uh, ushers will help them. Once you check your body, there are many things changing right now. I want you to move here quickly. They'll come and confirm you and will allow you to share. To the shame of the devil, go ahead. Both those that I'm praying for, those in the congregation, those who were delivered, something happened to you. Go ahead and pray. God is doing mighty things here. 
The Lord is showing me a wicked spirit tying this lady down. Let her go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Out! Release her. And this delay, this thing you put in her stomach, take it out now. Take it out. Let it go. Out! as you hold them, make sure you are praying in tongues. You must saturate the atmosphere with tongues. You don't just hold people like that. Devils are living. Whether it's through me or through you, they should go. Yes, Lord, let it go. By your power, by your fire.
Thank you for your testimony. Yep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, what happened to you? Straight to the point. I, I was like, having now this I see. sharp pain in my chest. So as the man of God was praying, I felt something very heavy coming out. You felt something coming out? Yes. The devil that wants to remain in your body, he must let you go this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. very light. You are free in the name of Jesus. Give Jesus praise. God bless you. Hallelujah. Any other testimony? Okay, while they come, let's just have the testimonies first. And Hallelujah. That's a powerful song. It's a miracle. Old school, but powerful songs. Alpha, you are Alpha and Omega is a miracle. Hallelujah. the anointing i can do stupid things but i'm not just acting foolishly where's the water is it not the water you brought for me i said you should give her i didn't say you should collect it huh i know why i drank it and i gave her take my dear you just do what i asked you to do take it there are three that bear witness in the earth the spirit, the water. Hold my hands. Out! Now! Lord, be cleansed now. That demon, I see you in the spirit already. Out you go. On your mark, get set, go. Go. Now. Go. Out of her. Out of her. And return no more.
go now. Now, now. Cancer. That's why I said cancer. Uh, 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 that cancer. What they said. Uh, that what they said. Doctors told you. Yes. Did you bring your report? No. You didn't bring your medical report. No. Prostrate cancer. Uh, that what they said. You believe Jesus will heal you? Why not? Right now. Yes. Daddy, God will heal you right yes. now. How many of you believe God will heal our daddy? Cancer, you are a spirit. And in the name of Jesus, depart from this body now. Together with all the symptoms, prostrate cancer, go. Go. You will go back to the hospital and they will not see a trace of cancer in your body. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I want to pray for somebody. I'm seeing pile, pile pile and this is not just ordinary pile it's quite advanced please let's hurry up pile i need to prophesy on somebody look let me tell you something um this is this is a family are you getting my point this is a family and this is this is like a hospital it's a medical center. When you enter the hospital, if they say remove your clothes and lie down, you won't tell them, do you know I'm an adult? You will just lie down quietly because this is, this is a spiritual hospital where we deal with a lot of nonsense that Satan wants to bring in people's lives. This is not the only person. There are at least two other people. Please, once we pray for you, don't come and stop us after the meeting and say, actually, I was trying. This is a family. Hallelujah. Jesus, there's one more person. Yes, Lord. Now! Thank you, Jesus. You are a wicked spirit. You are living. Shagapata. I see you already. You are going. I tell you, discernment is a powerful gift of the spirit. Content. I'm going to pray that many of us need, need discernment. Let her go. You see, medicine calls it pile. But look at the real thing. It would have been anything. That's why I tell you. Go now. Please don't waste our time. Go. Leave. In the name of Jesus. There's one more person. I hope that. Hallelujah. Now. <clears throat> I need to pray for somebody. This is a funny case. Your money used to disappear and miss physically please this is something that has been very serious you will keep money you will count it it's not the same amount. i know some of you are funny until you see it happen in real life to people come out the lord is showing me physically i don't just mean you spent it you don't know what you did this is something that has been surprising you please there is a woman an elderly woman too who is supposed to be here i'm seeing it the lord is showing me please please let's hurry up I don't know why you are surprised that your money is missing when the Bible calls Satan a thief. <laughs> See, it's not about stealing. Do demons eat money? No, no. It's a language in the spirit. It's a symbol of oppression. Why will God mention a case like this? If not that God is leading you in your meeting, will you mention a, a case that doesn't make sense like this? The Lord will set you free. Hallelujah. These are activities of the devourer. Mama, you're welcome here. Jesus Christ will visit you.
Thank you, sir. You believe that? Yes. Jesus Christ will visit you. Amen. Huh? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Visit Mama even right now. Look, like, brothers and sisters, don't let any man confuse you. Wickedness is real. Are you getting my point? Wickedness is very real. Because, look at me. Where is your mother? In my place. Where is your place? Cameroon. Do you know why I called you? Do, do I know you are from Cameroon? Do you know why I'm talking to you? Because I saw light left this mama and came to you. Hold on, don't cry. What is wrong? Wait, hold on. What is wrong with you? What's wrong with your mother? My mother made, had an accident, break the hand for long things. They went to hospital. She's still suffering with the hand. I was praying and I wanted to move to the line, but I saw light and the Lord said, uh uh, address this lady's situation right now. Your mother. It has not been treated till now. They went to hospital, but it's still there. It's still there. Because, you see, I'm seeing a signboard with obituary. And this thing would have happened since last year. Is this year? I'm seeing since last year a sign of obituary, your mother. But we lost our sister too, our elder sister. Hold on now. It's the spirit of death. Hallelujah. We are going to rebuke it because this is what I'm seeing on you too. Look at me. That's why you dream. Dead people. Dead people. <laughs> dead people. You see dead people in your dream. They come to you. Sometimes they're trying to give you something to eat. Yes. Is that true? You, the Lord will deliver you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Go! That wicked spirit. What does the living have to do with dead people? Hallelujah. I need to pray for some people now with this kind of situation. Hold on. Uh, the Lord is ministering to me. There are at least five people. I want you to come and stand here quickly. You see dead people in your dream. Sometimes they try to force food on you. Please, hurry up. The Lord is showing me. Let's just handle this once and for all. If you are still thinking about it, go back to your seat. Dead people, they come to you in your dream and they give you food. This is, this is the Lord. Please, separate the lines. Just stand here. It's a miracle service who will minister to you. Please make sure you don't go anywhere. I'm still going to prophesy. While we are doing that, did you bring your prayer request? Lift up your prayer request. If you didn't write it, you will be cheated. Please, in one or two minutes, any other person who has not written his prayer request, or I'm giving you two minutes, send a text to your loved ones, tell them forward your request quickly. We are going to collect it right now. The Lord gave me an instruction. Usually when we pray for the prayer requests, we'll just go and burn it. But the Lord said, I should pack everything and I'm going to be praying from this night till tomorrow morning on it. That's the instruction the Lord gave me. Let me see the devil that will stop your prayers from being answered. Hallelujah. Now, be healed. write it. If you have not written it, we are giving you one minute. Those online, I hope media has a way of reaching them. Please. You can send the text to your loved ones right now. Tell them, send me your prayer request and you can add it to your paper. We don't read anybody's prayer request. We just pray on it. So if you think you wrote something and there are still some other things you should write, please write it. Please. I have my own prayer request. It's an instruction God gave us. We are not Please, if they need papers, can somebody help them? Okay, the ushers have papers. If you need papers, just wave your hands and the ushers will locate you. Thank you, sir. Let me just finish praying for these people. Be healed, right? Thank you, Jesus. That delay leaves your family now in the name of Jesus. Go! Out! Now! Out! Out! By the power of the Holy Ghost. Out! You too. You are following me like an usher. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Please, you can go back to your seat if I've attended to you. Let's just decongest this place. Hold my hands. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, I need to, I need to really pray for you. This thing I'm seeing is not good. We need to pray because I'm seeing a ring. I'm seeing five rings on your hands. This is what I'm seeing. This is a spell. It must leave you now. Mm, it will not affect your home. It will not affect your life. It will not affect your home. We break it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shataka balakata. I'm seeing fire burning you. Something is living. It's like an altar on fire. Shake up Radoko Sopra. Go. 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 In the name of Jesus. Shake tapa. I see an altar. And this is like a village. The Lord is showing me. I'm seeing like a village. I'm seeing the horn of a cow inside a shrine. Let it be on fire now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I release you breakthrough, supernatural, inexplainable breakthrough because this thing tied the finance of her and her husband. I command its release now in the name of Jesus Christ. Instrumentalist, you are resting. Thank you, Jesus. We are going to deal, see, immediately I finish with this. We are going to deal with marital issues. Marriage. Delay. This delay in marriage. We are going to handle it right now. Sister, look at me. You. See, you. Where you are. God is going to visit your family. God is going to visit you. Do you come? Come. This is one of your major requests. Come. Run and come here. Come. Is it true? Is it true? What, what is it? Why? What is true? My sister, my elder Your elder sister yes, is not married. Yes, Every is just disappointment yes, here and there. And it's one of your major requests. Even as you were standing there, yes, you were telling God to visit you. To let you know God knows you. You will receive your own right now. Hold my hands. Thank you, Jesus. Let it be for her sister. Now, that cause of marital delay, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. God is doing a major work. Major work in her. Major work. Major work. Kabada Pretekadeba. Every altar of that. Please, if I pray for you, just look quickly. Go! Look at me, my dear. This is demonic. Don't put yourself in any sort of God in the name of friends. Eh? Don't let them do all kinds of things. Who made this mark on your body? Look at me. You're a very great lady. You are going to be very wealthy. Very, very wealthy. Don't forget about the body of Christ. Eh? You are an usher. You are acting as an usher. Come. Let me finish with you first before you continue. Come, hold my hands. She's serving in that. So, go. You are in the name of Jesus. You are leaving her now. Go. your hands together please those of you here what what do living people have to do with dead people many of these things you are seeing is not just about you are you getting my point i'm going to pray for you 
Lift your hands. Lift it up. Let her go. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Now I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to release you. Many of you will be surprised. It will leave you. Father, every demonic thing that has to do with dead people that has brought your people in bondage right now in the name of Jesus I'm asking by the power of the Holy Spirit at the count of three let that power break out of your life my God the fire of God is strong one two three come now let the power of God set you free now 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 everything with dead people I separate you now in the name of Jesus. It is done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift up your prayer requests. Oh, you've dropped it. Okay, please bring them outside here quickly. Well, now listen. Supernatural marriages. There are some of you, every relationship you enter, something must happen and it will scatter. But first and foremost, please, before marriage people, if you are in business here, yeah, come out. I don't mean if you want to do business, please. If you are in business, come out. If you come out here and we don't see you doing anything, don't come and lie here before God, please. You have started. You have started. Understand what I'm saying, please. Don't just be emotional. You are doing business that we can see. Everybody knows. Ah. It's time for your business to rise. Don't sit back. This is why we are putting this program. Strings, please. Brothers and sisters, it's part of our mandate to prophesy and release prosperity upon people. And I want you to believe it. Hallelujah. That an anointing will come upon you. And that you will run with the spirit of Elijah. Many of you will be surprised at what will happen from this night. It's not by power, it's not by might. It's by the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands, those who stand here. Every mountain has giants. The bigger the giants, the greater the mountain. Until you conquer the giants that are in every business mountain, you will not prevail. Let me tell you, you can try and do all you know to do. But when those giants are conquered, it will be a landslide victory. And this is what I want to help you do. Lift your hands. But the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Many of you need creativity. Many of you need favor. Some of you just need access. Please lift your hands. No man brings himself out of a hole. You need another person to help you. Hallelujah. I tell you, 
financial mantles will fall upon some of you here but first we need to kick out some giants from the mountain hallelujah lift your hands at the count of three those of you here i just want you to shout just one word jesus very loud you will be surprised that there are some forces tying down your shops and your businesses it will go and i'll release grace are you hearing me are you hearing me my god i feel the power of god help me with the super at the count of three one two three Let him go now let him go release his business by the fire of the holy ghost wicked men want to destroy this guy's business i'm seeing people sitting down and discussing let him go is a popular business this woman social center i'm seeing social center so you do hair i be hair you are is it platin hair is it true? The fire of God is coming on your heart now. Take it now. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing somebody. You do dry cleaning. Dry cleaning. You wash and iron clothes, but this thing has not been working. Dry cleaning. You are not the only one. Dry cleaning. Dry cleaning. Come. Hold your hands together. Sharp akata balada. Lift it up. Shende bada kata la kapo teke teke pa rakata kata pa kata kaka pa kata rante pre kata kapa. Every power holding down this dry cleaning business in the name of Jesus. Go 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 go. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now in the name of Jesus, I send a prophetic word to your business. I command dry bones leave dry bones leave dry bones leave those who are looking for shops we give you shops here I don't care whether they shop or not we give it to you now wherever you wanted to put your business and they said they will not give you a place go back and get your place those who need capital, may God by favor locate you this night. Even your enemies may they bless you. Hallelujah. Many of you need customers. I don't care whether school is on session or not on session, it's irrelevant. From the north to the south to the east, all over Zaria and beyond, I call for those. Who should patronize you in the name of Jesus? Whoever has spoiled your name so that men don't want to patronize you, I change that testimony now. I change that testimony now. Hallelujah. Oga okay, John, photographers, two of you come. You cannot be serving in Koinonia and be like the rest. Hold your hands. Oga okay, John, look at me. Do you believe in what I'm saying? You believe in what I'm saying? You will be surprised. Lift your hands, both of you. Father, for the sake of your house, for the sake of your house, 
I hold your business step into a new dimension by the power of the Holy Ghost on common access in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ on common access take them to places they would never imagine give them opportunities in the name of Jesus Christ I pray hallelujah go and succeed go and prosper now look at let me tell you one big secret many of you what you is greed are you hearing what I'm saying greed greed some of you don't even tight in your business if you are not faithful in tithing, the devil will eat you up no matter how many days you pray and fast. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your personal tithe is the, as a ministry, we tithe. That's why no devil can touch anything here. Are you getting my point? Be faithful in tithing. Deal in integrity. I bless your business. You are blessed in the city and you are blessed in the country. Where men have deserted you so that no man passes through you. I call you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. Let your gates be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. I command the forces of the spirit to align themselves and begin to walk in your favor. I command the earth to speak for your favor. In the name of Jesus, go and return with your testimonies. Everybody rise up as we pray on the request. Your blessing and honor and glory and power. Please, if you have not submitted your request, do it quickly. Blessing and glory, honor and power forever. Hallelujah. Please don't burn them. After, after the prayers, please pack them, put them in a bag, take them to my house. You will hear unusual testimonies unusual testimonies hallelujah in one minute stretch your hands here and begin to pray radically in tongues and say lord now is the time please outside stretch your hands towards the screen testimonies this spiritual technology unto the God that answers prayer shall all flesh come. my God I pray from now let testimonies erupt 
solve impossible situations change impossible situations I stand under this apostolic unction in the name that is above all names let there be the signs of an apostle I command I invoke the heavens let there be a shifting let there be a movement let there be a release of miracles financial miracles marital miracles health miracles job miracles in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah finally before I prophesy hallelujah you know that there seems to be a yoke, please don't be emotional, of marital delay in your family. Even if it has not affected you, come out and stand here quickly. If we are too many, just stand, just stand on the lines. Please, take this seriously. 40 years, no marriage. 45 years, no marriage. Or ladies, no marriage. Or men in your family, they marry and die. Let's get that devil out of your life right now. Marriage is the will of God. Marriage on time is the will of God. See, brothers and sisters, if you're doubting whether this will happen, Go back to your seat. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. It said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. I told you nothing just happens. Nothing. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, all of you here. We need to end this. Many of you just came and met battles you don't know anything about. Yet you are suffering it still. I don't care how old you are. We must open that marital door. And not just to one anyhow man because your age is already advanced. They say let's just manage. No. No. You're going to marry. Listen sisters. Don't marry an irresponsible man. In the name of just try to manage time. And our brothers, don't just jump and marry any Jezebel that will kill your life and destiny. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. We need to break this thing. Because many families are suffering this thing. And for those who have gotten married, you see that there is no child. And by extension, even praying for barren people right now. Lift your hands. Father, Zika Kabbalah Kataya. In this November miracle service, I'm praying right now. Many of you will be surprised. The spell of marital delay. Instrumentalist, are you ready? Look at me. What I'm seeing is rain in the spirit. When I count three, I want you to shout Jesus. That rain will drop. Because there are many of you, I'm already seeing rings. Spiritual rings. Covenants. This is what is stopping you. Please shout it with all your heart. My God, as they shout, this rain fall. Listen. Listen. There will be a divorce here. Many of you, I'm seeing rings on your hands as you're standing, meaning you are already married to demonic entities. This is the divorce. We are going to cancel this thing now. Whether you believe it or not is irrelevant. I'm telling you what I'm seeing. Lift your hands. Father, I pray by this power as they count, Lord, I pray that any spiritual marriage that is not of God, that is dying physical marriages, it will catch fire now. At the count of three, get set. One, two, three. Shake it, 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 it. Now, Spiritual marriages break, 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 break now. Every spirit, every spirit, every spirit, every spirit, let them go. 
Lord, release your marital blessing. Every covenant, marital covenant, entered in on your behalf. It catches fire now. We command a divorce. A divorce now. A divorce now. A divorce now. This is what is responsible for the delay of many of you. Pretty lady, no husband. Virtual sister, no husband. Handsome, responsible brother, no wife. People say it's how Nigeria is. There's nothing like that, oh. There's nothing like it's how Nigeria is. I prophesy to you, for many of you, especially for those of you who are of marriageable age, by this time next year, return with your supernatural marriages. I change what needs to be changed. We shift what needs to be shifted. Hallelujah. Sisters, hear me. Wherever your husband is, I don't care where he is. If he's alive, I bring him into your life. Brothers, in the name of Jesus Christ, I prophesy the struggle is over. Now, the struggle is over. You are not a liability to any sister. You are a blessing. Therefore, the sister that will agree for you and mean it from her heart, I bring her into your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. And for any of you that have seen traces of barrenness in your family, they get married, but they can't deliver normally except through CS. I change that report now in the name of Jesus. I change that report now. I change it now. I change it now. Please return to your seat quickly. Return to your seat quickly. Everybody rise. Let me just speak the last prophetic word. And then we'll wrap up. We're out of time. Just leave them. If, if they cannot stand up, just leave them there. Please, quickly, quickly. Everybody stand up in honor of the Lord. Lift up your hands, strings. Boy, state students, stand up. This gentleman have been here all the way. Hold your hands together. Lift it up and look at me. They came for IT all the way from a boy. And God from from Kogi, oh the Kogi guys, you will catch fire. Take it to your campus. Set every devil in Kogi. Drive them out. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Look at me. You will receive an anointing. You will receive a mantle. See Kabbalah. Elijah said, if you can see me as I'm taking up. Father, in the name of Jesus, let something mighty fall upon these ones. Grace for signs and wonders. Grace for uncommon revelation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where are the boy students? Who are going back quickly come out please save our time a boy students that came on it in zaria appreciate them as they come come and line up quickly it's time to catch the fire and take it to a boy state all of you hold your hands quickly you didn't just come for it you came for a spiritual it lift your hands lift your hands you will go back with fire. Sekata. At the count of three, the power of God will fall on you. Right now, get ready. One, two, take it now. 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 Go and burn. Go and burn. 
set your campuses on fire. In the name of Jesus, heal the sick, cast out devils. Mike, right? Mike, allow where is he coming? Come. Hallelujah. I, I said I was going to pray for him. Hallelujah. I heard that he just signed a check to pay off for this venue. Hallelujah. I'm told. Come. You cannot give into the kingdom and remain ordinary. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. So shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy vats to overflow. Satakatapalakai. Let a financial mantle come, O oh God. According to Proverbs, he said, For the sake of thy house, I desire thy prosperity. I lay my hands upon you. Step into a new level of grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord honor you. I give your seed a voice. Go round the earth, gather your kind, and return back to him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Everybody, please lift your hands. I always tell you that this is the part that I love most. I know we are late, but it's better for your destiny to change. You must return next month with your testimony. Please lift your hands. Many of you don't know the power of prophetic statements. Where's the guy from University of Joss? University of Joss. University of Joss. Where's University of Joss again? Come quickly, please. Save our time. You will catch that fire and take it to your campus. Drive every devil out. Yes, Lord Jesus. For you will do mighty things. Lift your hands, both of you. Lord, we wait on you for fire. Take them to another level, oh God. Take them to another dimension. Fill them with uncommon power. Let their limitations melt. Lord, as these hands come, let an anointing come upon their lives. In the name of Jesus. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. All right, foot me now, quickly. Foot me now. Foot me now. Please come out. Lift your hands, both of you. Hurry up quickly. Hold your hands together, lift it up. Father, in the name of Jesus, May they step into amazing levels of the anointing. Take the anointing to your campuses. Now, now, now. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you. Lift your hands. Every closed door. Every door that has been closed over your life and your family. I command right now. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Everything called failure in your life, failure, it will become a forgotten testimony in the name of Jesus. That spirit that causes delay. It works for others until it is your turn. Right now in the name of Jesus. Shake it, take it I command acceleration. You will run like Elijah. You will run like Elijah. All those trusting God. 
for jobs by 28 December the next miracle service I don't know how God did it Lord shake end to end of every office and give your people jobs receive it receive it receive it hallelujah every terminal disease afflicting you or any member of your family right now i command that disease on your mark set go 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 hallelujah hallelujah everything the devil has stolen in your family joy peace progress please believe what i'm about to speak into your life everything the devil has stolen i prophesy right now receive sevenfold restoration sevenfold restoration sevenfold restoration hallelujah I command the favor that distinguishes a man the favor that separates you from others in the name of Jesus let that mantle of favor let it come upon you now receive it receive it receive it every spirit of death that says you will not see December lift your hands this is very important the way people are dying like chickens every spirit of death I put a mark of the blood and I command it to pass by your family pass by your family pass over pass over hallelujah all those trusting God for admission, you have it finally. I said you have it finally. I don't care who is the rector or who is the VC. That's none of my business. We legislate in this place. Receive your admission. And anyone here that any lecturer is saying you will not graduate, they will sign your paper as you graduate. Hallelujah. Finally, I pray for your finance. We are a blessed people and I pray for you. Right now, whatever makes you not to tithe, whatever makes you not to give and obey the laws that bring increase, whatever makes you feel God is cheating you, I curse you away from that deception. Receive the giving grace. Receive the giving grace. Receive the giving grace. And I pray, whatever is holding your finance and that of your family, I command you to release it now. In the name of Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.